for the Lamar Thomas Show, featuring the greatest receiver in the history of college football. Just ask them, Lamar Thomas. I was born in uh, Ocala, Florida. I moved to Gainesville to go to high school. Been recruited probably since the ninth grade, illegally, I might add, by the University of Florida. I, I still can remember Coach Solinger, Don Solinger, coming out to our practice one day. Here it is, this guy comes out in the University of Miami jacket and, and I, I said, I can't believe that's Miami out here. And you know, I wanted to go up and say, hey, I'm Lamar Thomas. And, and actually, I, I did walk up to him and I said, hey coach, uh, I'm Lamar Thomas. And he said, I know. And that was the start of my uh, relationship with uh, the University of Miami. Right. another good block and Toretta lays it up. come down here, you'll be on TV every weekend dominating. I thought about it. I said, man, where do I sign? My mom, uh, on Saturday mornings, I would wake up and she'd be holding my hand. I thought she was the weirdest lady in the world. <laughs> but she was holding my hands and she would be rubbing them and saying, one day these hands are gonna make you a lot of money. <laughs> um, she was smart. So now, here he is. The great one, along with co-host Gary Furman of Kingsport.com, Lamar Thomas. There he is, the great one. The great one. Uh, man, I got, I got some haters in the building, man. I got haters in the building. OJ McDuffie is just booing me left and right because we showed the Penn State play. And I... I I didn't mean for him to be here during that time. And then we obviously have uh, this guy. Look at this guy right here. Oh, okay. Okay. Bernie. Oh, How about that? I'm a, I'm a sandwich in between two of my favorite receivers, Lamar Thomas and OJ Juice McDuffie. <laughs> he gets a nickname. <laughs> well, he caught my last pro pass. Oh, my God. So, yeah. no. Oh, my God. You caught the last touch. I call a couple of preseason. What's up, guys? What, welcome to Wednesday night's Lamar Thomas show. Lamar is at Boat Campers in Plantation uh, this week. A big week, Lamar, with so much, obviously, to talk about. And um, yeah. I'm sure your special guests there are going to have something to say as well. So much going on at the University of Miami. So much going on in college football. Yeah, it's, it's a lot. It's, uh, you know, with, with uh, it's, since OJ's here, it's Penn State, you know, with what they were going through, with uh, what we're going through, with the, obviously our AD being um, uh, fired or released or whatever terms they came to. Uh, also, you know, with Manny losing the, uh, the Florida State game. Actually, the, the program losing the Florida State game. There's a lot going on. There is uh, there's a ton to talk about. I, you know, I don't know if I can talk as much as uh, as these guys. I that are right here because they're really good talkers, especially that OJ stuff. Now, Bernie, man, he lets his play do the talking, but that OJ, you know, he loved to talk. He he was uh, an exceptional Penn State athlete that talked noise. Student athlete. Student, I'm sorry, <laughs> student athlete. Tell him they're coming after his head coach. People are coming yeah. after his head coach. Can we get? Can somebody else get James Franklin? Sure. Don't say that out loud. He said sure. <laughs> they are. They're they're coming they after James Franklin. Back. And, and I'm, I'm going to give O.J. another scoop. I hear that Penn State, if James Franklin does leave as they expect, that they are going to target Matt Rule of the Carolina Panthers to come over. Penn Stater. He, he kind of agreed. He said, he's a Penn Stater. <laughs> he's a Penn Stater. He's real proper. He's a Penn Stater. That's, how, that's what he said. He could play out that way. Bro, stop talking about you went to class because Bernie Kozar graduated with honors. We went to class. He went to, uh, he went to class. 
all the time. Two major. I think I had a couple classes with Bernie. I'll vouch that he was there. You that know? old? Yeah, me and Gary in the same age age bracket. Yes. Yep. Hey, Gary, why is Lamar so far from graduating? Okay, I graduated. <laughs> okay, let's let's. I, I graduated, man. I it took me uh four more years. No, I I went back in two thousand something, but I I got it. But you got it. I got it. it. No, you got, got it. it. I got it. I got it, dog. I got it. Thank you. I'm how you're eligible Thank you. all those years. Well, let's not talk about the eligibility. He's, he's cracking jokes <laughs> on the side. Let's get to what we got to get to, man. Um, do we? Let's bring in Bruce, man. Bring on, bring in Bruce, man. We because uh, I know he's gonna get the party started right. He's 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 been waiting on this. Well, I mean, you, you, you need somebody to help some support you against McDuffie. That's why you want me. <laughs> I'm trying to get the heat off of me, man. Because I'm your lawyer. Yeah. <laughs> Guy, man. Hey, man. Okay, so let's start it off. I know you want to start it off. What's the first thing you want to talk about? Come on. Well, man. I mean, I, 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 don't, I, don't want to, I don't want to put Gary on the spot, but he you seems to be like, on the spot. Well, I am, but he, but he seems like he's got Miami all in for Mario, and I'm just, I'm curious because I'm going to ask him. What happens if they don't get him? Aren't you going to feel a little bit like? Jeez, I put all my eggs in one basket. And not me. I'm not putting all my eggs in one basket. Oh, you're, but you're saying there's nobody else but him. Well, I think right now he is the targeted top candidate. Now, if if that doesn't come to fruition, then obviously the Lane Kiffins of the world and the whole gamut of coaches out there would you know come into play. But I think right now as we sit here tonight, Mario Cristobal is the target of Miami's search. Right, we all know that. But I love this letdown, right if, he, if he doesn't come here, the letdown is going to be shoom. Because well, that's all we're talking about. Well, it depends who does. Right. And yeah, you guys keep going at it. I love this white on white crime. This, this is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> you like this what? White on white, white, white crime. White on white crime. <laughs> hey, hey, all right, so here's my next question for Gary. Right. Should Mario run the table and make the playoffs? How long does Miami wait before they say, oh, we can't wait anymore? Is They'll have to figure table? that out, Bruce. In, in your mind, is there a timetable for this? Well, I mean, they got a they got a tough game on the road Saturday night at Utah that they got to get through. Yeah, that's a big Okay, game. If, if they win that game, uh, yes, they are on a course for the playoff, but I uh, they, they would still have to win the conference championship game as well. So they're three wins away from any playoff conversation. I don't think you could put the cart before the horse with Oregon um, because there's other teams that are sitting there poised. If they stumble, uh, they're obviously out. And well, then if they the stumble, whole Cincinnati's thing. going to be thrilled because I think they still may, may be on the outside looking in. So I think that question is good, Bruce, but I think it's for next week. Okay. I mean, guys, can we, can we just talk about this? Saturday? I mean, let's start on Saturday, dog. I mean, the gamut of emotions. I mean, I, I haven't. I haven't had this gamut of emotions since uh, the week before. That too. Uh, since the week I was going to say since I, since I got with the Dolphins. How about that? Uh, hey. But, I mean, this is this game was up and down. You know, here it is. Two turnovers. Set it off. They go up 17. Nothing. And then we come back. And then we take the lead. And I'm screaming. I'm excited. And all that went to sugar to hell to whatever once they hit the bomb for 50 some yards and i said oh god damn here we go and I, I mean i'm 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 running around i was with my boy chris t jones up in palm beach County. we running around high five we're like yeah, god, yeah and bam the deep ball and then bam the fourth and 14. Yeah, but before that, we had a fourth and what, two, three, and we didn't go for it. And we didn't go for it. No. Now, I think that pre, I think that precedes the other stuff that happened because had yeah. there wouldn't have been anything else. So, what's your thought? Should they have gone for it or not? Oh man, you know, I think we had um, we had completed. We, I think we we got what two fourth downs in the game, and they decided not to go for this one. Um, in hindsight, you know. Probably should have because he was on the roll. They had done some good things on fourth down. But I, I, I would think that as a head coach, he probably said to himself, I got this. I'm going to make the right call. And obviously, those guys on the other side are getting paid also. And they made the right call, which they were able to beat us. And 
it looked like two zone coverages. It looks like the, the, the deep ball had to be covered too, where the corner did not get a jam, and he let the receiver run down the field. And then the next one, the fourth and 14, was also uh, a zone coverage where we didn't put hands on anybody, no receivers. We just let them run down field, and uh, they got lost behind us, and they were able to make the, the completion. Would you have blitzed on that? Because I remember in 2002 in the Ohio State game, fourth and 15, and Randy played a straight-up defense, and they hit a square out for 15 and a half yards and got the first down, and they kept the ball Ohio State. Had we stopped them then, we would have won the game. So I, I, mean, I, I would have gone after that kid. I would have. I mean, you you got you to gotta go after him. I mean, we saw that on the Sunday night game. Where, oh, no, it was a Thursday night game where, where um, the Miami Dolphins played the – uh, Baltimore Ravens, and they went after Lamar, and they did some things where they were they were disciplined. They were in their their their, their lanes, their rush lanes, and it gave him nowhere to go, and he had to get rid of the ball. Yeah, and, you know when when that's happening, it's a split second decision. You don't have any choice. Uh, we're not the coach, obviously. He's getting paid a lot of money to make those decisions, and uh, obviously it just didn't work out. Not for long. Yeah, you, you know what, Lamar? There was a whole sequence of them in the fourth quarter. Yes. Uh, decisions on both sides of the field that had to be made, and 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 it seemed like every single one of them went against Miami. Um, let's let's talk about them one at a time here for a minute. Um, the first one I, I'll bring up is I think it was third and four. Mm -hmm. uh, Miami's trying to finish the drive and, and put the game away, mm -hmm. and uh, Florida State brings pressure. And Van Dyke very quickly throws it out in the flat to Will Mallory. Um, a horizontal pass. Is, is Bernie still there? Yeah, Bernie's here. I would love to get Bernie's opinion on this. Um, uh, Bern, did, hey, hey, Bern, did you watch the Florida State game? I saw most of it. All right, I'm talking about late in the fourth quarter. Um, Miami's driving, trying to put the game away. It's third and four, uh, right around mid midfield. I forget the exact yard line. And um, Florida State brings a little pressure up the middle, and uh, Van Dyke very quickly um, shoots it out into the flat to his tight end, Will Mallory, who doesn't really have enormous uh, foot, you know, foot quickness in, in, in a small space like that. And he, he was brought down for like a one and a half, two yard gain, which created fourth down. Um, my theory in that situation is you got to throw the ball past the marker. Um, you see that horizontal pass so many times at all levels of football. Um, I would love your viewpoint on that. You know, I'm I'm with you in in a general setting. I absolutely, when you got a first down markers, you absolutely want to be at least in and around the markers to a little past it because, especially with two awesome receivers uh, flanking me right now. One of the cardinal rules is <laughs> you always come back to the football. So, you know, even on a perfectly thrown ball, you're coming back towards the line of scrimmage, back towards the ball. So to get a little past the sticks, absolutely, in a perfect world, you absolutely want to do that. One of the issues on plays like that where you almost have, like on that third and four there with Will Mallory the other day, you have almost like an arrow um, flat corner concept behind that. So... If your arrow, your flat, Will Mallory, gets out in the flat and he gets too deep, that two to four yard arrow flat, if he starts creeping that into five to six yards and he's getting past the sticks like we're talking about, he could actually um, get himself in, in, in the way of the corner behind it. Now you could be kind of almost a catch-22 where you have nobody there or one guy could cover two. Um, that being said... Um, you know, those are the type of things with more veteran teams and a more a more concise offense where you got to work through that type stuff. Would yeah, you have had, would you had a right safety right. valve, Bernie? Would you have had a safe like the like the back just flare out a little bit just in case that happened? Because well, I'm a, I am absolutely. You, you throw to the backs constantly. Wow, Bruce. So to your point there, that, that was one of my massive <laughs> hidden secrets there. Absolutely, the phrase chip check through was a state yeah, but, but it was bang bang it really yeah, was bang, bang bang so so bernie t tell take us in the in the brain of tyler van dyke okay he, he he gets the snap 
and Florida State's coming hard. And he doesn't have a lot of time to think. And his instinct, boom, out to the flat to Mallory. Um, but what, like, what's going through his mind? Yes, and, 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 and I actually really like how our QB's been playing and how he's been throwing the ball down the field. And when you have a third and four in the fourth quarter of a game tight on the line like that, and you are getting pressure like that from Florida State like they did on that play, the quarterback isn't exactly off base by taking that flat out there. That's typically something that with the motion, with the play action, that uh, and with a tight end that you know trends more towards 250, and uh, especially with the, uh, with two great receivers next to me, defensive backs sometimes are the least violent people on the football field. So you know you could you, you sometimes want to anticipate that ability to maybe get a, a yard or two rushing uh, from that standpoint. But absolutely, you know when. You got third and four, and you got a blitz like this. I don't overly fault the QB because I've been there, done that, and that is typically the play that gets you the first down. All right, so Bernie, now it's fourth and one and a half. Um, they have to make a decision whether to go for it or not, and they decide to punt the ball. Um, any thoughts on that decision? Well, you know, this is, this is an easy one to, to second guess on a Wednesday night right here. Well, it doesn't work, so yes. simple right now. So I could I could jump on my soapbox right here and go down a homily pathway here. But in reality, especially yeah. for the older school guys right now, in the old days, you for sure punted 100% of the time in those scenarios back 20, 30, 40 years ago. Really? It yeah. is amazing to me to watch the – the almost a gunfighter mentality of of some of the uh, the head coaches now in the way they're going for fourth down now. I mean, yeah, fourth time. down and one, fourth down and two is sometimes almost a given. Um, yes. Half at the NFL level, I watched the Browns game uh, out in San Diego, or the San Diego, L.A. Rams, <laughs> L.A. Chargers, and all of a sudden you're able to uh, – you're able to see guys doing things that that really you got to keep this in perspective right now. Yeah, but but your defense was better than this defense. This defense has been struggling for months, and he, and he gambled on his defense. His it's his defense. He gambled on it. If yeah, well, gamble, I would have gambled yeah, going for fourth down. You're, you're seeing teams again, like in the NFL and, and even in college. Like again, we're talking about the the. Um, the Los Angeles Chargers, um, man, they're going for They went for like six, seven times a game. They're on the minus side of the 50 going for it on fourth and seven, fourth and eight. Mm-hmm. From from an old school quarterback perspective, that's an incredibly aggressive type um, offense. But, you know, the, the data analytics is showing things like that. So I don't uh, – I myself, uh, I, I've been absolutely kind of – try to decide where I kind of shake up um, on terms of going for this on fourth down because so many teams now are actually having really good success with this fourth down going for it. What do you think of analytics? I, I mean, I hate analytics. I, I think analytics are getting more coaches fired um, than I've ever seen. I mean, I hate the analytics. Well, you know, Gary, as a guy who at the University of Miami in 1982 almost had a buck 85 cave my chest in when I went to lift it, and as a guy who was so proud to like sprint through a five a five point five five forty time, um, back when we were in the finance and economics classes, my brother, that it was glorified algebra then. So I actually needed that type of analytics that's like uh, that type of statistical knowledge because in the heat of battle i really believe especially in that fourth quarter um defenses people players coaches we revert to who we are and statistically if you can study the other team and i was somewhat ocd in terms of trying to decipher through the math of what um the other team was doing against uh, against us especially in the previous three to four game breakdown in that three to four weeks that month before they played us, I would decipher, understand the analytics of their plays and calls. And bluntly, in the fourth quarter, as much as they've done that so much, you would think they've got to change in the heat of battle. They creep in and do exactly what they tended to do. And 
that was a big successful point for me to take advantage of. So when the coaches look at these grids and they say, I'm supposed to go for it on fourth and one in this situation and, and, and all that, you, you approve of that type of mindset to decision-making in game? Well, um, yeah, to the, yeah, absolutely. To a degree, you know, the older, the older school guys, um, were having to evolve through it, but one of the, and God bless, um, my first pro coach, uh, Marty Schottenheimer, he had a philosophical belief that he said championship teams and championship moments, thou shall always get a yard if thou wants a yard. And if you're a championship team in championship moments and you need to stop me or stop you from getting a yard, you should be able to do that. Um, I'm physically from the defensive standpoint, I never sniffed the field, so I can't comment <laughs> on that. But from the offensive standpoint, I live and died with that that seed in me about that ability to have a toughness and a core toughness of when you need one yard, that will get that one yard because we are championship teams. Wow. So, um, and just, just, so you guys, just so you guys know. And, and, and Lamar is mad I'm taking over his spot. Well, well, this, you know? But listen, I'm going to keep Bernie on, but I got to tell a quick story since I got OJ here. Oh, shit. Uh, this, is, this is a true story, too. Uh, Jimmy Johnson was going to probably release me when I got here. And my homeboy, Bernie Kozar, came in the huddle. Oh, that's a said, good one. He said, <laughs> hey, home slice. <laughs> that's what he called me. He said, hey, home slice. Your boy, Jimmy. I think he's gonna release you, bro. <laughs> but I'm going in the game. I really don't want to be in there. So let's get this shit over with real quick. <laughs> and he says, if the VB comes up and press, I'm throwing the fade, be ready, score, so I can get the hell out of the game. <laughs> so I go in there, I'm, I look at him. He's not he doesn't even look at me. It was a run play call. And I said, mm, damn, I wonder what you're telling the truth. <laughs> Let me just go ahead and make this move, beat this guy, and this, you know, whatever. I beat the guy, I make the move, I, I squeeze him, the ball hits me right there, and the, boom! I run all the way through the end zone because I wasn't getting stripped from behind again. And um, <laughs> I score, and I have over 100 and some yards from that, that night. And uh, Bernie comes to me after the game. He's not cutting you now, buddy. <laughs> All right. And this, That's story, awesome. this, this guy, we were in the huddle. I think it was in Indianapolis. We are in Indianapolis. And he's, we, he comes in the game. Dan gets hurt. He comes in the game and he says, he says, uh, he says, look, uh, anybody. And this is just to make sure. I mean, it's late in the game. This is like the fourth quarter. Game's on the line. Just to make sure everybody's loose and he says, Hey, uh, has anybody noticed there's a chicken in the third row with <laughs> and I, and everybody just kind of fell out. Everybody <laughs> fell out in the huddle. And uh the first play he called, he said on the left side, he said, uh, I forgot who the outside receiver was. He said, OJ, I want you to run the option route. On the left side, on the on the right side, I think of Ronde was on that side. And then, and then on the right side, he said, whoever the receiver was, he said, I want you to run this round. He said, Lamar, I don't give a fuck what you do. I'm not throwing it to you. <laughs> I fell out laughing. I thought it was so funny. But he was he was before his time. He called a zone route on the left side and a man-to-man -man route on the right side. And most of the time, he would have a motion, a dummy motion, so we could tell what, what they were in. If it was zone, he knew to throw to the zone side. They're in man. The guy was following Nuto to uh, the man to man side. Right. And uh, just brilliant, brilliant guy. Before his time, like OJ said earlier, he was definitely before his time. And uh, these, these young quarterbacks, I know the game has changed somewhat, but they can learn a thing or two from this guy. Uh, yeah. Study, study film. Study yeah. film. Yeah. But he does have me a little confused, Lamar, because we were talking about th that sequence third and fourth down when Miami right. was, was trying to ice the game, and they threw the third down pass out in the flat to Mallory, fine. Right. So they're, now they're looking at four, fourth and like one and a half to two yards, right. um, and they have to make that decision. Do we go right. for it and try to s shut down the game, mm -hmm. or do we punt? And they chose the punt. Now, Bernie initially said that the punt was the right decision. 
um, which a lot of coaches would make that decision. They would trust their defense. Um, they would look to punt it inside the 20, make them go the whole length of the field and, and fun. But then he also just told the story about Marty Schottenheimer um, saying, you got to be able to pick up that yard. Um, so I'm, uh, yeah, so, I'm yeah, so gear to, no, but gear to that point, the, um, the, um, if you are going for it, you absolutely have to be able to pick that up. I'm just saying from 30 or 40 years ago in the eighties, nineties, two thousands, fourth and one and a half, fourth and two from the 45 yard line, 43 yard line. You almost always were punting back in the old days. That's just in the last year and a half. That that old cliche of football is really out the door, and that that going for it on fourth down is is something that's 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 absolutely happening more, and happening more with more success. And, and also, we had a five point lead. They didn't. They needed more than a field goal to beat us. So I could understand why he would have punted and hope they don't go ninety yards or whatever it turned out to be. Yeah. Which is what happened. They did do it. So, but, Bernie, you know, so one of the things, though, as I'm evolving, and again, I'm not trying to pick on anybody, and again, I, I'm not trying to be the Wednesday, the Wednesday night quarterback and stuff. But you know, me and Juice were just talking about as Lamar was handling his his show here so eloquently. <laughs> is that how the games also changed? Is that on um, for receivers, especially like for, and I'm not saying this because OJ is sitting next to me, but OJ McDuffie, slot receivers. You don't see a lot of jamming right now. You don't see a lot of hand contact. You see a lot of free releases right now. And then, uh, and obviously, anyone who's watching football knows there's minimal to no contact down the field. So you're able to, from an offensive perspective, really put defensive guys in tough situations and. Actually, we're going to start seeing we're going to start seeing more people go for it, Gary Bruce, on on fourth down in those situations. As um, not only as the season goes on, but as I think as football is going on now with these rules, because great receivers, look at these two guys on my uh, left and right, they couldn't be covered by press coverage when they were playing. When defensive backs were allowed to mug them, hold them, beat up on them, and I, and I really am not saying that to be nice to them. What they could do against press coverage was absolutely special. Now today, and on uh, defensive backs, and with the way the rules are, they're not allowed to have their hands on. They can't grab them. Um, that makes it really challenging for these DBs and um, us quarterbacks, us offensive guys, need to continue to take advantage of that. But, but they can jam them inside five yards, and they're not doing that either. I they're not doing that either, especially you in the should be. shell. Um, cover twos, cover fours, the slot inside receivers. They're getting free releases yes. right up on the safety. Yes, this, that's my this point. This is like Christmas morning, okay? <laughs> this is Christmas morning. For that. And, 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 and jamming them it affects the timing with the receivers and they have to reroute themselves. I don't know why you don't do that. I just don't get it. But And we were told all off season by T-Rob and by DVD, Demarcus Van Dyke, that they were going to do that. That's what they were well, talking about. Also, well, I'm, I'm not even. I'm not. I'm not even picking at all on the University of Miami and their defense. Right. I'm just telling you what I'm watching in the pros. Every other team I'm watching, it's incredible the lack of contact for defensive backs not getting a jam on number two and three um, with with shell coverage. I mean, that's a cardinal rule never to let that happen. But it happens. It happens not just with here with the University of Miami. Actually. Uh, University of Miami hasn't been as bad as quite a few of the other teams I've been watching in terms of flat out free releases. Um, we're able to get your that fourth and fourteen though they were pretty bad. They, they, yeah, well, they, didn't get, they didn't get a jam on that fourth and fourteen. No, nor did they get a jam, Lamar and Bernie, on the first play of the ensuing drive when they hit that sixty yard pass mm -hmm. and they isolated uh, safety Cam Kitchens who. Also gave the receiver a free release, but he's a safety. Um, and the, the, the kid was isolated one on one on, on a freshman uh, safety, Cam Kitchens. They pick up 60 yards. And um, since we're doing the, the Manny experience here, uh, Florida State gets down on that fourth and 14 inside the one. And now there's a little bit more, about a minute left in the game. And a lot of, there was a lot of conversation should they have let them score there? Um, and then, and given Tyler Van Dyke and the Miami offense a chance to come back on offense and go back up the field and get a field goal, uh, theoretically, 
Um, and I guess, you know, at that point, you'd be putting the game into into overtime. I just have um, a quick question, Gary. Do you know if they called a timeout before that 60-yard pass? And if they saw Kitchens one-on-one with this guy, why didn't they? I, I, don't, matchup. I don't think they did. Miami's been playing that defense all year, so they probably were ready for it, Bruce. Um, but, you know, I, I just think that's a brutal decision. I mean, what, what football coach with a five-point lead is sitting there thinking, I am going to let the other team score – the go-ahead touchdown. Um, yeah, Bernie, I, I would love your happens. opinion on that. Yeah, the old, the, the, again, the old school of me. I'm not saying I'm always right with it. I have a hard time with a five-point lead giving somebody a touchdown like that. And actually, one of the my little one of my little pet peeves now, from an offensive standpoint, that's been happening from a macro perspective around college and pro football is that. People are in the shotgun so much inside the five yard line. They're in the shotgun inside the one yard line. So nobody's really taking snaps from under center right now. There's a there's a lot of ins, um, inconsistency, mistakes now that happen with stuff under center. There's still quite a few little tricks that we could do in terms of getting people to jump off sides and and get a um, make a mistake down there. You know, we're talking about 18, 19-year-old college kids. I'm not trying to exploit them, but that's there are mistakes that happen. So just to give a touchdown in those situations, you know, I, I have a hard time with some of that. Um, but I do I, – I, I probably would have liked trying to save some more clock to give us a little more time to um, – Attempt that field goal. Yeah, yeah. What's, Bernie, what's Bernie Kosar, the quarterback, doing, Bernie? When you're on the sideline, there's about a minute left in the game. Like, wh- oh, that's a great. Game. What you know are what, you doing? Gary? Are you saying, Coach, let him score, let me back out there? So, Gary, that's you know what, that's an awesome um, kind of question right now, and and to um, and not to get over emotional and not to kind of sidetrack from um, <laughs> just the game and stuff. But that was a massive coaching point of Coach Howard Snellenberger. I could tell you exactly what I've ever been doing. He coached me up right then. And, it, and that's how us UM quarterbacks in the late 70s, early 80s were coached up. He flat out said to us, you anticipate that the worst thing is going to happen. Mm-hmm. And you anticipate it so that you're prepared, so that you're not surprised. And you, and you make sure – that you're talking to your receivers, you're talking to your offensive line, you're telling them that this could happen and that you have a plan. So I would have my plans. I would have my plays. Um, I would be talking to guys. Heck, it materialized, heck, and that still resides within me today. It absolutely resided within me, as in my pro career, to, to the guys here. They'd tell you, in duressful situations at the end of the game, we were not spectators if our defense was out there. We were huddled up. We were talking. We had a plan. We had. How about the Gator game, baby? How about that Gator game, baby? We got Smith. that fullback, right? Yeah, the first time I got caught swearing on national TV, but <laughs> I wasn't gonna. I wasn't gonna take a knee and let a, a true freshman kicker give it a shot. I was gonna try one more little fade. Yeah, you got it, baby. Hey, <laughs> hey guys, we got a, a defensive player that just popped into the lobby that I'm gonna that I'm gonna bring up on the screen here. Uh, our, our main man Rohan Marley oh, is, is, is in the house. Uh, yeah. Say hi to yeah. Bernie Kozar. You know LT, obviously, Rohan. Yes, I'm it. <laughs> What's up, yes. Rohan? Respect, man. Why, man? I love it. <laughs> hey, hey, before we start this thing, I got to tell you this greatest Rohan Marley story. Uh oh. <laughs> okay. We have to cover our ears. So, you know. I'm a senior. I'm that guy. Yeah. I'm, you know, I'm that dude. <laughs> OJ hates to hear that. Uh, I'm that guy. So I decide I'm gonna, I'm gonna go out with Rohan one night. He said, "Ft, ft, come with me." So sure, man. Whatever. You know, I ain't got nothing to do that night. I'm just <laughs> off night. We didn't like, know you had I, an I, off night. And I, I, I really <laughs> did not. I, I really did not know how large. Rohan and the Marley name was. I, I had, I'm from Gainesville. I'm from Ocala, Gainesville. Okay, they ain't playing too much Ro Marley up there. Right? I'm not not Bob Marley up there at that time. I, I mean, maybe they were, but I did. I had no idea. We go to the Lime Keeper on Kendall Drive. 
He pulls up in his BMW. We ride with the top down. We ride with the top down. He's a freshman. He got the top down. We ride and we pull up to the line key. The guy doesn't even park in the parking space. He pulls up in front of the club and said, let's go LT. And I said, well, well you're not going to, you got you, you to gotta park, right? Let's go. He starts walking in the club. They, it was a line. They opened up the line for him. <laughs> he looks back at me and he says, he's with me. I'm LT. <laughs> you, I'm, you with me. No, I'm with him. He walks in. He walks to the middle of the dance floor. And just stands there in his glory. And they start playing. I shout to Sheriff. Who is this guy? What the hell? I had so much respect for him after that. I said, shit. I had no idea who he was. I had no idea who he was. I had no idea how great. Obviously, the Marley name was at that point, and man, it, it just, it just, to me, that was like, this guy is the bomb. <laughs> cool Marley story right there for you guys. That, yeah. that, that, bro. I mean, come on, man. We had fun, man. We had a lot of fun, and you, I remember going to watch you play at Palmetto. I watched you play at Palmetto, and I said, I remember going back and saying, "Hey, man." This dude is running around hitting anybody. He don't give a, he don't give a damn if you got the ball or not. He can destroy somebody. He is. He may, just, hey, we well, may have the ball because that's how I get my stats. But, well, yeah, but oh, I mean, bad body and all. You was like, you was damn. Yeah, man. You know, Roe body was man. You know, that's my guy. But Roe body, man, he he was built like a. It was like he was like SpongeBob. His body was like SpongeBob. He was like all that. And he banged it. He's like a hidden missile. I was like, what do you think? What do you think? And Bryce was there. What do you think? I said, yeah. We get him on our team. He hitting anything. Uh, yeah. Love you, bro. Love Thank you. Bro. you. Thank you, LT. And, and you know what? That helped me get my scholarship because I used to have to bum around the school yeah. to get a look. You know, I, was, I got the last scholarship. So I was like, wow. yo, look at me, look at me. <laughs> you know? right, right. So I, I had to earn that scholarship, you know what I mean? That's okay, you did. I, I you, you did, brother. You earned it because of your play, man. You earned it because of your play. And when you got there, you didn't you didn't relax on that. You you went full board or whatever, and you from from day one, you let everybody know that yeah, you know what, you might look at me as undersized, and you might think about, you know. My dad, but I'm a football player, and I'm gonna bust your. <laughs> hey, you know what's funny is that I really didn't know Rohan, but when I went to Jamaica a few times, I dropped his name. Whoa, whoa, that was really because you know that's where it was from. But thanks, man. Yeah, oh, man, yeah, I know Rohan. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, being at Miami was a great experience. Obviously, I had a lot to prove because I didn't come in as a blue chip player. I wasn't like really a really a all, all American guy. I was like honorable mention kind of thing because they had to do it because I played so well. They yeah. had to put me up there, even though I wasn't a prototype linebacker. I mean, so I had to earn it, you know, and then the guys, they thought I was there because of my name was Marley. So I had to really fight every day in practice. I had to fight in the locker room. So I had a rough at Miami, but the good thing about Miami is that's how it's supposed to be. You got to prove yourself. Yeah. And, you know, that seems like for me today, that's what I noticed with the, the, these young guys. They ain't got nothing to prove, I don't think. You know what I mean? You can't, when I played at Miami, you can't get a flag on, and stay on the field. You can't walk off the field. You can't jump off sides and stay, off the, stay on the field. It, 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 so they, they used to say we don't have our discipline but the only time they can say that is because we celebrate. That's it. They, our, our, our lack of discipline was called, oh, we like to celebrate after a great play. Yeah, Lamar catches a three yard out and celebrates <laughs> a lot. <laughs> Takes his helmet off. <laughs> okay, you know, well, 
Lamar <laughs> Jackson, a little guy. He hey, you coming back at me. I hear you. I feel you, baby. You coming back at me. That was good, yeah, bro. I got three three out. Out. Yeah. That's why you got the show, so everybody can make fun of you. Me, That's you, right. Tap, and Ryan will talk about that one in the group chat. Yeah. You, got, you got your boy. You got your boy. <laughs> yeah. Well, Randy Hill was the best at that, though. You can't. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, he, was. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he was. I learned from him. I learned, I, but I ain't real. I'm gonna get you, boy. I'm gonna get you. Boy. Right. I'm gonna get you. You and that typhoon you used to have, and that yeah. ninja. Let me ask you something. Let me ask something though. So I'm in, I'm in New York, and you know, I'm, I'm doing my little thing, trying to get my life greater than this today. But I'm, I'm, I'm keeping oh, up. Wait, 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 wait. By the way. Look, the, the, the Marley coffee is the bomb, bro. Thank the you, bro. bomb. Thank you so much, bro. Man, that, hey, man, I, woo, I feel it. Thank you. Thank you, bro. It's a, Marley that, coffee, man. Marley it took coffee. took a long time to get it there, you know what I mean? But what I was going to say, though, I was going to ask about what's happening with the AD situation. That's Gary. He's the answer, man. They, um, they, they, they fired Blake James yesterday, or yeah. they, they reached an agreement. Uh, whatever you want to, uh, however you want to phrase it, and they have begun a search for a new athletic director. Yeah, there are a couple guys on the list that we might, we might have heard about. Oh yeah, Gino Toretta, he Ooh. should be on the list. There's, there's uh, Alonzo Highsmith. Ooh. He should be on the list. Now, now you're talking. If you want, listen. If if they want to to bring this thing where it belongs again, right? You need people that understand the tradition. You need the guys that really like, and not that they're not qualified, qualified guys, of course, but if you have qualified guys that understand the tradition and knows what it takes to win, you're talking about winners, you know what I mean? Those guys are national championship winners. Those guys, they come from with the lineage of Bernie Kosar, yeah, as you see that lineage of great quarterbacks, the great running backs, the, just great teams, great era. So we need that. If you don't have that, you're not gonna get the recruits. You, 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 you need. Um, you, we're inspired by our elders. We're, I'm inspired by Lamar Thomas when I'm at in school and I get to see him on campus after he's playing in the league. That, that's 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 aspiration to be great because those guys are working out. This is how we got better, you know. I used to see Wesley Carroll. Michael Irvin come to practice and and work with Lamar Thomas and teach him the the little the little extra things that they picked up in the pros how to be a greater athlete. That's why when you see the Miami players of those times, those guys are running pro routes because they're learning from the pros. We're learning from our predecessors because we're allowed to be a part of the team. We're allowed to be there. We're allowed to exist on the campus. We are welcome. We're loved. So. The, the, the players, the younger guys like myself, we pick up on that. You know what I mean? And that's what we need. If we ain't, if we're not getting the right atmosphere with the right attitude and the youth to look up onto these greater players to understand, because we have a tradition. This ain't going. You ain't. This ain't FIU. You know what I mean? We're not FAU. We're not F. I, we, I, we ain't none of that stuff. You know what I mean? Them people, they just got a program. You preach, know what I mean? Bro. Preach, bro. We, yeah, they they not they not us. They're not us. We are Miami football. We're the University of Miami, and that's where the buck stops. Yeah, but you know unfortunately, I mean? that's not working anymore, bro. They gotta know, find know, somebody to go into the to get these kids that are in Dade, Broward, and Palm Beach County and keep their asses here. They can't let them go flying all over the country. That that to me has to stop. Otherwise, that's I don't know. Who, it doesn't matter anymore. I think Gary will agree. That's why everybody's so high on Mario. Because he's well, gonna thank you. Those, those, but those guys that we're talking about, like the Mario, and they they know this stuff. Right. They know why you think Mario is so great over there. He's a hurricane. What, what, do, you, what do you mean? He knows it. He knows how to do that. He's, a, answer, he's a hurricane. How else could how about, it be? He's a hard worker. How about this, Ron? He's a hurricane who also went and got trained by Nick Saban. Got how trained by Nick Saban. How about that combo? Yeah, Nick Saban's a master. I mean, he's running a pro factory over there. Yep. You know, I mean, that facility, you know, look, we, we don't have the type of money that those schools have, you know. But when I came to Miami, we never had the money then either. We were a private school, you know what I mean? But we had players and we had a winning tradition. 
you, you look, you win, you're gonna get looks and you're gonna get players. You gotta win. You 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 gotta win. You gotta win. And and like you say, Bruce, it's 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 just exactly what you're saying about getting these recruits to stay, but they're not gonna stay if they don't believe in what you have. Right, that's that's correct. And they're also, you guys had leaders on your team. I don't know who the leaders are anymore. You're like, back in the day, I was probably before Lamar, but when yeah, you were, Earl you were, Brown was around, nobody screwed around. And then Russell was there. About, there was all these leaders. Can I tell you something about these guys here, Lamar Thomas and those guys, they're very mean. They're really mean. They're, they're like almost borderline jerks. <laughs> <laughs> Like little, like, like little guys like us, thirty years. The little guys like us, little guys like us. I remember, you know, I'm sitting before practice, and Gino Terra there. They're throwing, he's throwing the ball to Lamar, and I'm kind of right there. And Lamar is not the quarterback, so he throws the ball back to me for me to run it to Gino. I'm like, hey, oh, Gino, throw me one. This man told me, hey, I don't throw the rooks. <laughs> you know what I mean? So we had an attitude. We had the chip on our shoulder. I mean, it, come on, you walk around that place with Leon Cersei? This guy is like, if he grabs you, crushes your bones. <laughs> you know what I mean? Real animals, man. So, I mean, being a, being a part of this university and being a part of this University of Miami football team, the brotherhood, the leaders, our big brothers, you, you, don't, you don't get a better bunch of guys, you know? I mean, we just had the 91 reunion and after the game, we went to hang out at Ryan's house, and it's all the brothers. And we all we do is we laugh, and all we talk about when we gonna do this again. All we do is we all we talk about is when are we gonna see each other again? You know what I mean? And and we stopped playing so long ago, but we love each other. We really do, man. We really love being together. And you know, I'm very happy that Lamar thought about me on this legendary show because when I turned on. When I turned on the screen and I saw Bernie talking, I'm like, wait, am I on the right screen? <laughs> is, there a, is, is there a B screen? <laughs> hey, B hey, screen. one one of the first questions I asked asked him when he when uh when I was at, I said, Are you in this country? Because bro, <laughs> I was on, I, I, I didn't, didn't I ask you that, bro? I yeah. said, Are you in this country? What are you doing tonight? Are you in this country? I forget that Lamar has a show, but when he, I'm like, wait a minute, does Lamar want coffee? Let me wake this after five. Because <laughs> I will call him for the coffee, dog. Yeah, yeah, I, I, will call him. Coffee, I, had, I had the coffee. I had the coffee at my uh, Louisville. I had the coffee at Kentucky, and I yeah. was rocking and rolling oh, every man. morning, baby. Oh, I was man. rocking oh, and rolling. They're like, man. How you so hyped up? I said, Marley Coffee, Marley Coffee, Marley Coffee, Marley Coffee. We support coffee. each other. And we support each other. And, and then, yeah. and I'll tell you one thing. We have a group chat. And that group chat, there's no holes barred on that group chat. Oh, yeah. Oh, I can imagine. <laughs> I, I've been on some of those group chats with you guys. And, and, and my buddy Mark Caesar and these guys, oh, man. The, the shit flies, man. There's no holes in that. You know, you know the, the fact that the fact that Rohan and Sap are basically brothers. Yeah. <laughs> brothers argue. They argue on the group chat. And they don't care who's in the front of and they'll, they'll, they'll go off on each other. And it takes two days for them to, to make up, but it's just like it is. We we just look at it like, there they go again. And then you know Ryan Collins is gonna call me and say, Get your two little brothers, man. <laughs> going at it again. I mean, they it is no holes barred on that thing, man. Can I tell you Warren Sapp? Bruce, you should know this. Well, let me tell you. Warren Sapp is one of the smartest oh, yeah. human smart. beings I've ever met in my life. I mean, I like not only that, but one of the well-respected human beings. I'm sitting in my house one day, and my phone rings. It's FaceTime. You know who's on the other end of FaceTime? Michael Jordan. I'm saying, wow. <laughs> He's playing golf with him all back. Yeah, I'm like, Sap, this my hero, you know? So <laughs> when you talk about Warren Sap, man, he's truly a legend. And, you know, I'm happy that we be, we're, we're so close. We're roommates in college. And I'm just proud because he teach me so much about American history. 
he taught me so much about po American politics because I know nothing about, you know, I'm learning. But Sapp has a great, one of my great teachers when it comes on to like this American history in general. He's so intelligent. This guy, oh my God. <laughs> he's my, he makes me feel stupid. That's why he's so, that's why he's so like edgy because to him, everyone's stupid, you know? <laughs> hey, bro. And he's going to argue with you because he already knows the facts. He yeah, yeah. He's, he's, he's not going to argue with you on something he doesn't know. But when he knows it, he's already looked it up. So he has the facts. Well, well, he has the facts. Whenever he's wrong, right, he, he doesn't tell me he's wrong on the group chat. He tries to call me on the phone. <laughs> say, Sap, stay in the group chat. <laughs> hey, 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 bro. Yeah. So we we got a um two two twenty five hurricane says where do we get the coffee, fellas? Oh yeah, that's a good question. Where do we get the Marley coffee? They want to know. Amazon. Know. Amazon, Amazon Marley coffee, please. Oh Amazon, okay. Yeah, for now. Okay, Rocky.com is there, you know. And okay. the and the Instagram is that Marley Coffee. Yeah, man. And you got that one. Coffee. Why would you do, do we have any do we have any codes for for discounts? I'll no? find one. I'll find hey, man. <laughs> we, got, we got this one. I, I can't remember what it's called, but by the name, yeah. It made um, me say I am I'm gonna wait on that one. I'm gonna wait on that. <laughs> this, this hey, is the day when I'm coming in dragging and I'm gonna have to yeah. hit that. I got That's a question what? for y'all. Let me I got a question for y'all. Y'all y'all know all the coffee companies, right? Yeah, most of them. Yeah, you do. Any of them play with y'all at Miami? Mm, no. No. I'm just asking. No. <laughs> no. no, bro. Isn't that called blackmail? Hey, hey, hey where was y'all when I needed y'all? <laughs> hey, hey, just so you know, OJ McDuff is leaving the building. Um, we're going give to give a shout out to Fish Tank. Big up OJ yeah. McDuffie, man. Yeah. Big brother OJ. OJ. Hey, me, me and Rowan was talking two weeks ago, man. We had a blast together. Yeah, yeah, always. <laughs> hey, hey don't, don't hang around him, bro. Don't hang around him. Don't. Hey, LT, bro. OJ oh, did a great, did a great job at the Dolphin game the other night. Uh, Riley yeah, he, he got me like, excited I for about a future as a cheerleader. Two seconds. <laughs> Until I realized the reality. Chili, Gary? Yeah, he, call me a chili. he said you, you did a great job. Well, was it Gary? No, he, but he said you did a great I job. I heard it call me a chili. But you <laughs> You did an awesome job. Uh, I, I, I was hyped up for like the first I can cheer, though. two seconds, and then I realized reality is I can't do shit. <laughs> hey, good job. Hey, you can find OJ McDuff in the fish tank. <laughs> OJ. Catch 81 Foundation. Catch Foundation. And, I'm, and I'm verified on all that. And he verified on it. And I'm going to go on his show and we're going to tell a lot of stories. Yeah. Tell the Penn State ones. Hey, I, I have been ducking them because I, the, the stories that we have to tell are just too, it, it's, it's too much. Tell some of the Penn State stories. He said, tell some of the Penn State stories. <laughs> What? No, wait, 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 I don't want, I don't want Ryan McNeil to call in and get, get, get salty, because he <laughs> owe his ass up. You talking about LT with like two catches and two gears? Two gears, two catches. You talking about all you want. <laughs> OJ legend. Hey, on. but I got two wins. Yeah, you I thought about the W. But you weren't happy, though. You weren't happy. <laughs> I was happy with the wins, bro. Get out of here. What OJ yeah. McDuff is a legend. That's one. He is a legend, man. He is He's a legend. Exactly. <laughs> All right, bro. Right. Love you too. Is hey. Bernie still there? Jerry Sandusky yeah. said, "What's up?" Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. Stop. 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 Yeah. Yeah, covering it up. They got to they they straighten up some things up there. <laughs> stop, stop, Juice. Go. I got to finish my bro, show, man. Me, I'm not going to get you started, man. The guy up. is. No, I love you, bro. Hey, don't they have bouncers there? Hey, LT, they get a bouncer. No, <laughs> no he is a bouncer. He's, he's, he's very physical sometimes. You know, he's, he was a physical receiver. He was like, uh, uh, he was the Heinz Ward before Heinz Ward. How about right, that? Right, right. Wow, wow. Very physical. He right. didn't give up. The guy got a the guy got hit one time and his face was bleeding. 
<laughs> and I said, damn, boy, you, you, dog, you, he, he wanted to go to the next play. I bust my nose. I said, I called a timeout. <laughs> I, I said, timeout. Jimmy said, who called timeout? I said, I did. Anybody got a mirror? Anybody got a mirror? <laughs> OJ, hey, man. Most of the guys hey. were Mark. They were tough, but this dude right here now. His, 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 chin, wasn't tapping his, out. his chin was split wide open. And we got a turnover. He ran in. I said, you a fool. <laughs> He went in and called a touchdown. Yeah. And it probably went in the mob. It probably was Dan Marino's uh, uh, record breaking touchdown, which I took the ball from him. <laughs> and I held it up. And Dan Marino got pissed, but I said, shit, I'm, I'm trying to get some of this TV time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Juice, man. Love you, bro. Tell a story about when you uh, got a Rondé in trouble. Okay. You started this Okay, I can't show this in front of the kids, but. <laughs> <laughs> All right, bro. See you later, Julie. Bernie trying to get something to eat, man. They ain't get... Bernie, you trying to get something to eat? You hungry? I'm heading past, past my bedtime. Yeah, it's oh. bad. Bernie, say goodbye, man. Bernie, this is my guy. Hi, man. Bernie. What's man, up, love, Bernie, guys? Man. Be good. Yeah, see you, Bernie. Be Let's good, baby. Be good. Be good. good. Be good. <laughs> Take care, Bernie. No See you, Man, I got Bernie Kozar. Look at all the sports we're talking about on this show tonight. In the house. Incredible. Legend. Rohan Marley. The Legend. great Rohan Marley. Hey, by the way, bro, yeah. I was going to, I was going to, you know, I was going to do the same thing you did. I was going to lock it up, but shit, it, wasn't, it, wasn't, it wasn't working, bro. Oh, I know. I know. Yeah. I know. I know. Man, I know. Bernie. Bernie, be Bernie better suited to lock it up than I am. <laughs> God damn. Bro, I remember when you cut it off, bro. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, yeah. when I went That's to right. Miami, these guys told me, oh, you have to cut your ass. I'm not cutting nothing. <laughs> <laughs> you see how I just look? You had to ask me nicely. When was your last haircut? Probably, what, about 30 years ago? <laughs> no, right, right before that COVID. Right, uh, yeah, uh, right before COVID time last yeah before covid yeah and then after that i was like i'm tired of this barber stuff like trying to keep up i can't do it it's like you gotta hey, go hey, these hey, guys bro, who was the other linebackers with you corn francis twan russell oh, bless the day. Corn francis. ray lewis yeah brother twan brother corwin ray lewis michael barrow jesse armstead they was with me. <laughs> i was with them but you know <laughs> hey man you stuck in the game every now and then. No, hey, what bro doing in there? Boom! He done made a made no, a big no. hit or he done caused a fumble. I, I didn't sneak in, sir. But I'm just saying, bro. Hey, I looked in there, I said, what is rat boy doing in there? <laughs> see, I knew I was gonna get him. I been, I was holding that in. I see, see you send us see look. <laughs> they call me Lion Man today though. Okay, you lying man today, but back then you was rat boy. <laughs> you rat boy. I got, and, I got a question. You hanging out. I got a question for Rohan. Rohan, did you watch the Florida State game? Did Last I week? watch the Florida State? You know what? I was I was in a restaurant. And I had it on my phone. Did you see and the end of the game? Yeah, I did. All I, right. I, I asked Bernie this question from a quarterback's perspective. Um, Florida State's got the ball with about a minute left in the game. They get mm -hmm. the ball down to the half yard line. Yeah. Um, and they have to make a decision. And they kept they, on trying to. Do they, do they the try to stop them uh, defensively, or do they let them score and then go try to score themselves on offense in the final minute? They tried to stop them defensively. What is Rohan Marley, the linebacker, thinking in that situation? Well, um, the, being the way the game's played today, and it's a high scoring type of game, and we don't have a defense anymore. There's no defense in the in the game anymore. It's just like these guys just run the ball up and down the field. I mean, with with I mean, you're on the inch yard line. You you're not gonna stop me. You 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 you. you I don't think you you can't. I mean, a sneak. You you out of four plays, they're gonna get the ball in from the inch yard line. I I would I would I would I would want to strategically, with 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 what hope I think I have. And I think I can do something with about 50 seconds with a few timeouts. Strategically, strategically, I don't know if this would happen. He's still there? Sorry. Yeah, yeah, we're all good. I was calling my little phone here. Oh, okay. Hold on. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, you're good. But strategically, that would, be, that would have to be a call from upstairs. Hey, if it's a sneak, get a little push. Let him, let him slide in. 
and let's get out there and try and get what would be the how much would be we would be down by what was the score well uh, miami was up by five at right. that point I was up by five. So, yeah. oh yeah, we get a field goal out of that. Yeah, we got we got to get the ball. How are we gonna get the ball back? Like, That's what happened. You're right. That's what happened. But I would have done it like this, bro. They were down five. They scored. I would have spent my time worrying about stopping the two point conversion because the two point conversion, if they failed, they would only have been up one point, and the field goal wins it. They made right. the two. They would have been up three. A field goal would tie it. So to me. That's what I would have done. I would have let him score and then yeah, you try got- to stop him on a two-point conversion and hope you can get a field goal. Yeah, because it's impossible to stop them on an inch. It, 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 out of four, it, it, it's just inevitable, you know what I mean? It, well, and and plus, if we had Rosar Van Dyke over on the sideline jumping up and down, let me yeah. in, let me in. I'm going to go get it. I'm going to go get the LT, if you was in that role, one second, LT. One second, LT. We're not speaking of our type of defense. We're speaking about this new defense where you yeah. win the game 38-35, 48-40. We don't play them type of games. Could you imagine? We pride ourselves. Tubbeville, could you imagine Tuberville going, now, boys, now, boys, Rohan, <laughs> Rohan. Too hard. I need you to go on there Kane's and let me go. Kane's too hard. Oh, my God, Rohan, look who's here. Look at this. Look at this. Oh, 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 we got the boys here. Oh, what up? Oh, 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 we got a line up like this. He's calling Rat too. He's calling Rat too. And yeah, Smitty's such bro. a nice guy. He ain't gonna call him Rat. Defense, you know how it goes. He's the leaders over there. He always <laughs> rope me. But this, is, but this is a Darren, what's up, big bro? But this is a lineup right here. You see this? Yeah. Mike the middle, out the outside, Sammy, Smitty the Sam. This us. We stop it. Right there and we can stop that. We two white guys. This is perfect. <laughs> yeah, we're coming for you guys over there on the offense. <laughs> we got the defensive guys now to kind of answer these questions now. Yeah, you, you get these guys these questions. No, but wait a second. How come, how come we're not getting jams on number two and number three? On, oh, no, you guys. Uh, point point shaking, man. They don't play that kind of football no more. <laughs> can't say that, man. Point shaking, man. Hey, I got, I got a question. Okay, as defensive guys, in the last the, the, when they were on the one and a half line, what if the call came in to let them score? What do you do? I, I don't know. That that's a tough one there. I, I don't even know how what? to. How to left. That, that's not even part of my Smitty vocabulary. Left on that <laughs> that's, that's not even part of my vocabulary. I, I I mean I don't even think like that. You know. I mean, we would probably just like, man, screw you and just play our own defense. Like, <laughs> like you know what I'm saying? Like, we just called our own thing. Like, let's go, man. These jokers ain't scoring. That would have been a slap but, in the face but, to but us. But, Darren, I mean, hear me. But, Mikey, today, though, not Dan, not us. <laughs> no, no, be, be fair. Be fair. Yeah. Well, if being fair, they never would have gotten a 60-yard pass anyhow. Well, I mean, that's the thing. You talking about right. fourth and fourth and 14? Oh, like you do, you do a three man rush, but then you got two low hole guys. So now you got five guys down low. I mean, you got guys just running free. That I mean, everybody need to be at the sticks. Understand where the sticks is, where they got to get, and you keep it. You you're like playing everything. Right? That's just like bad ball. It was like deja vu because I went to the North Carolina game a couple years ago, and the, it was the same kind of scenario. They were driving down the field. I think it was fourth and long. And fourth and seventeen, pass, and then I'm going to touch. I'm like, yeah. what in the world? This is this can't happen. You know, fourth and fourteen. Like, man, defense. that's crazy. They're not okay, playing I understand defense. the first play of the two minute drill. They ran a scene like a, 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 a it's like a stretch scene. Uh, got be okay. I understand that, but okay, you make the put the ball. But fourth and fourteen, like you, no, but, that, that's bad but Mike, ball, man. Mike, think about that first play you just mentioned. That scene, Ralph. You have a slot. Man to man on a safety, a freshman yeah. safety at that. You know what I'm saying? You're not blitzing, but you got the safety on the slot, man to man. That's just 
That's just not good. That's just not good. Hey, Gary, that's what I said before, Gary. See, Darren's got it. They should have called timeout. When they see that matchup, they better fix that. They can't let that play go on. He's right. It's just, it's just bad. Well, I, well, I'm I mean, playing that one hot man coverage like that, you're going to get that matched up, right? And then, but like the safety, you're right, it's a bad. I mean, the safety can't lose leverage. He lost leverage on the outside, right? You got to lean that way to free safety and whatnot. But I mean, I, I definitely understand what you're saying. But the fourth and 14 is the thing I can't choose. That's bad. You know, that so they bad. practice too. They, they got it. Okay, good. All right, you got it. They understand that. But I mean, fourth and 14. Like, come on, man. You, it, it, hey, your point. hey, God, I got to ask point, a question. Mike. I got to ask this question right now. If it was back in the day, and because we ain't substitute, I didn't even know what dime and nickel was, but I ain't see that in practice. Your <laughs> linebacker stayed in, whether it was Roll or Jet, uh, Jesse Armstead. The linebacker stayed in. Like, how would you have played that, you know, if you were messed up on that slide? I mean, we saw it against Houston, but how would you, Darren? And Darren, you were phenomenal on receivers. Like, you wanted to cover us in practice because you knew in the game it was going to yeah. be easy. Yeah. Before you answer that, could I chime in and say you wouldn't you wouldn't let him get that release? You would have your hands <laughs> on him. Yeah. So wait, 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 oh, wait, 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 wait. And Darren, you got one of these. There it is. You got one of these, Darren. You got one of these. Got a couple of them. <laughs> but you but you know what you know what lt when you think about it even though we didn't come off the field we really are what they are now as far as we probably would have been called strikers then that's what that's the ability that we had we were really you know what they call a striker i was a linebacker but i, I was able to run with, run with receivers that's what a gilbert frierson is now you know what i mean yeah. and so uh Keontre Smith is like what Jesse was, you know what I mean? A wheel yeah. linebacker who could run. And so really they just changed the names of it. We were already that type of style of play. And that's why I give um Jimmy Johnson a lot of credit, man. He he changed the game for guys like me and Jesse and Mike. You know, even in the NFL, when I first went to the NFL, you know, the tail of the 3-4 defense was still kind of hanging on, like with LT and <laughs> Pepper Johnson and you know those big <laughs> six five, two hundred and sixty pound linebackers. But when Jimmy came in and flipped that and brought in a guy like me and a guy like Dixon that would, you know, guys who are two twenty five who could just run fast, it changed the whole game. And so that's why guys like Roe were able to come in at, in our system at UM. Everybody, oh, he's too small. He fit in perfect for what we do, you know, yeah. at UM. He's basically he would have been like a, a striker now. You know what I mean? Right. And so and so really. We played that same way. Now we we believed in getting our hands on guys. That's that yeah, was the you gotta thing. get a jam. Yeah, you gotta get physical, you gotta be aggressive. He's not gonna outrun you. You gotta believe that. Hey, and Darren, you know, <laughs> my man had them crusty ass hands too. <laughs> yeah, them yeah, them lobster claws he was getting on your ass. Yeah, man. You gotta be physical. You gotta be aggressive on them guys. See, like when we when we played Houston LT, they had never seen that. Everybody, yeah, everybody was that. just letting them run and do whatever they wanted to. Yeah, <laughs> we, we were driving yeah, them to no the ground. That. <laughs> and and they had the ball was in their hands. You knocked the crap out of those guys after they had the ball in their hands. They dropped That's about it. ten passes that day. With with our front four, if yeah. you if you if you disrupt those guys at all, we getting it. We getting to them. You know, our front four where they were monsters. Yeah, yeah, yeah all eight of them because you rotated them. That's right. <laughs> Smitty, do you let them score at the end of the game to give the ball back to Bernie Van Dyke? Say that again. I'm sorry, Gary. You let Florida State score with a minute left in the game. You're up five. They're down at the half, like half yard line. Do you let them score so you can give the ball back to Bernie and Van Dyke? It's just, it's just against my nature, man. <laughs> we're, gonna go, we're gonna go down. We're gonna go down saying, listen. We're gonna go down saying, you know what? Listen, bro. Okay. Defense gave it. They, they just stopped them on three downs, and they going four down. It is what it is. But goddamn, we ain't just gonna let these. Not okay, Florida yeah. State. We ain't gonna let them. We can't. We can't do that. Did we just that's, that's not. Burn, burn, you want to you respect the hey. defense guys? They let them go. Hey, with yeah. the, um, <laughs> the whole mantra. The whole mantra of us was. You know, our backs are to the wall. We never give up. I mean, that's right. That's, when you're in that huddle and it's us 11 guys, 
You know, I believe when I'm that close to the end zone that I'm getting in with our the ten, ten other guys in the huddle. Smitty, I've been with you. I absolutely know you concur from the defensive side that right. what you're going to rally to do, what you're going to do, how you're going to talk to your guys. This is why we play the game. To is it, you know, rise up in those um, moments that looks out, that looks where we're outmatched, and just make a play. The Jimmy Johnson line. line. Somehow, some way, let's make a play. But but yeah, that's, that's it. Teams Garrett, are Garrett, my mind, I'm thinking somebody gonna make a play somehow. But, but, somebody, let me tell you something. Let me tell you this. Come on. If, if I'm on the if I'm on the offensive side, I'm saying to myself, bitch, let's go deep. I'm like, hey, okay. We ain't got but 30 some seconds, but I'm gonna make a play. I'm gonna throw that bit. Gino. Throw it yeah, up. I got right. you. I got you, son. I see. He got you. K Dog, he got you. Well that's Come that's on. that's from being the old man on the call here. That was that was a big Howard Schnellenberger, early Jimmy Johnson <laughs> philosophical beliefs. Two to three times every quarter. So that means eight to eight to twelve times a game. You're throwing deep. You're throwing bombs. You're stretching people. This is a hard game. Hey, I got a question. I don't know if you guys want to answer it, but it's been all over Kane Sport, and people have been talking about it. That is, you guys against the 2001 team. I, you know, I, listen. I talked to you guys, and some of you, and, and so I know everybody's opinion. The 2001s think they're the greatest of all time. But I got to tell you something. When I saw you guys play, when you played in the in the Cotton Bowl against Texas, I don't think anybody could beat you that day. I don't think anybody. Hey, I got to. I, I, can I chime in? Can I chime in real quick? I got to say this real quick. And I love Ken Dorsey. I love those teams. But this is why I love the U. I bet you I'm not answering for everybody on the screen right now, for all of our old teammates and brothers. We all thought we were the best team. Yeah, yeah. We all thought we were the best player, and we all thought we were going to win every game. Right. That was that, that self confidence, that self esteem. Yeah. Right. I'm saying it in the spirit of levity, but we all thought we were the best team. Right. And that's I, why we played. So that's I, why we dominated. And I can yeah. tell you this: the two teams I think about, and I think about some of the best teams, the teams that lost, the '86 team, yeah, and the freaking '90, was it '90 team? That team was dog. Yeah. That was a team. They had Cortez Kennedy, all them boys on the D line. Yeah. But we were the best team. Yeah. And then it matter about the 91 to 89. I, was, I mean, yeah. that 90 team to me, and you can say, I mean, every, the guys can say the 86. I don't know, but those teams that lost were really, right. were really right. Yeah. Right. the best team. Hey, I, yeah. I got to say something, though. You got twisting on the yard line, right? Let's not talk about the old teams. We're talking about this team. That's four. What's the record? Five and five. Five and five. Not, not, not where we were. Not where we were, yo. Bro. There's the defense rank. <laughs> not where we were, yo. Not where yeah, we were. Okay, you, you know what I mean. You can't. You you, you got to think that this is the offensive team. There's, there's, there's no. There's okay, nobody stopping anybody. Is it, bro? They, they were. Is it? Is it what? An offensive team. I don't know. I don't know the identity. I mean, right? well, you're right. I mean, these past couple of weeks, I like the quarterback. I like the quarterback. I like that pro style, UM style. Just throw the ball down the field, let's jump around. You know, I like. I like. That's the UM style quarterback. You dig? Not nothing against King, right? Because that's a personnel. But I like. I like this guy. I like him too. Yeah, I, Bernie. I like Derek King. Derek King. Derek King, I gotta yeah. give him a, a absolute yes. great shout out. Okay, what yes. he did last year, what he yes. did, Magic. trying to come back, so phenomenal down. young man. How he's played through his college career, love him. And, and right. but Magical. Just so you know, he helped that quarterback. Oh, absolutely. He's, he's, you still, around the, I mean, he's still around right. the program. Yeah, they, they had him right. on the school. He talked about how he helped the program. Yeah, the, yeah. the maturity, the professionalism of him, the way he's handled himself in a situation that is less than desirable for us football right. players. Not right. That, for this yeah. to happen, love how he's handled himself. Yeah. But again, from how our, our red shirt Q is playing right now, love, love the way he's able to push the ball down the field, 
push the intermediate throws. Yeah. Spread out you linebackers on the bottom of the screen here. Keep you yeah. on it because you're not allowed to do inside drill anymore. So tackling is at a is at a, uh, a premium. premium. Yeah. 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 Tackling the lack of that. There you go. And that gives us that gives us an opportunity for offensive things to with the, the cue like that to, to push it down the field and kind of get into um the more things change, the more they stay the same. Or yeah, Ro, we're we're kind of talking about some of the old school stuff, but I really believe with the type of personnel we have that we could actually be successful um with some of that stuff now also. True, yeah. true, true, true. Yeah, and, 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 hey, hey, guys, I, I got a sandwich here. He, he got a, he got a <laughs> mahi, mahi sandwich. What you got over there? I got a mahi, mahi. There you go. Michael, last week we had the FSU guys on, and he named Hamburg Vano. I'm going to get you a sandwich, man. Remember that? Oh, one? Yeah. Yeah, that, that, that play all every time Florida State, that play is on. And that's you. <laughs> but you, 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 I think you were told me before that you watched the film. You, knew that was together, right? you say, uh, say that again. You, I thought you told me you would watch the film before that. You knew that that's what was going to happen. Yeah, I mean, that, that particular play uh, was a big part of the offense. And uh, and so just film study and stuff, you see they had an indicator. Anytime the back swung that way, that's when they ran to play the opposite way to try to get you to go with the back. So all week, I'm just like, okay, if they run that play, because when you watch <laughs> film, you like, man, it's every time you break down a film, you may find like one or two like plays, you like Sherlock Holmes, that yeah. you say, man, if they do that, I'm going to make them pay. I'm going to take a shot, you know? Okay, 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 Michael. Michael, let me interrupt you. First of all, we ran that play in practice. We ran Z middle screen, okay? And you guys always disrupted it. So they tried to run it earlier, and I said, I went to you and I said, hell no, nah, bro. You know when that guard pull out, that's what they run it? Come on, bro. You, we can't complete that in practice. Don't let them complete it here. Next thing I know, that dude, that dude is leaking. He's leaking. He, he got a drunk man. He got a drunk man at 3 a.m. He, 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 he got him. Hey, I got I, I got I gotta say this about my old roomie, man. One thing that I that I love about Mike and, and that he helped me with was, you know, he was a student of the game. And, mm -hmm. you know, he really helped me uh to understand how to watch film. And we used to watch and I remember, man, LT, we was watching some games prior to that, man, and he called that play out. Like he knew that was coming. Yeah. You know, yeah. like <laughs> and so even at film, he was like, see, when this guy do that, and that guy do that, this was so when it happened, man, it was like a dream. And so I was one of the first ones to look at Van Over. So I looked at him and I saw his eyes blinking. And I saw him like blinking. And I saw the, and I saw some blood in my eye went crazy. It's it's crazy. Started jumping on it's him. Me and they used to get crazy. It, it, it was awesome, man. That, that, that was I love that game. That was like a real physical game. You know, Harvard yeah. had a great hit on uh, on Larry yeah. that game. Larry, it was yeah. one of those games, man, that Hey, guys, I think that's where Goldberg got his move for the wrestling from Michael. Fear, who? Guys, just so you know, you know, yeah, we want to talk about real football, but we want to talk about some old stories too. Let's talk about some Michael Barrow. Use my roommate stories. Okay, there was this opportunity where. I wouldn't even say opportunity. He forced me. He forced me to want to cut his hair. One second. One second. Elsie, why is your thing scratching like that? Do you have on a mic or something? It's not. It's not mine. Who's on? Oh, I think somebody else. Let me see. Is it mine? Is it on your shirt? Maybe the shirt's moving around too much. Are you, are you on your mic? It's not moving. I don't know. Get a headset with the mic. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Sorry about that. <laughs> Let's see if it was Lamar. I just muted him for a minute. Get him, Roe. Get him, Oh, much better now. The show's much better now. Yeah, it's, 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 I think it's on the Martian. I don't know. This go ahead, LT. Go ahead with your yeah. story. Dude. All right, let me tell my story before y'all kick me off my own set. This guy, Michael Barrow. He was a bully in our room. It's me, Charles Farming, Carlos Anthony. We kicked out. Um, Mike Barrett had a room by himself. But one night he came home. No, I had a roommate. My roommate was in their room all the time. <laughs> yeah. So this guy, this guy said to me, 
you going to cut my hair. I said, all right, bro. I looked at Charles. I said, all right, bro. So I cut his hair. And we put him in the front on campus. What he didn't realize is that I, I saw it in the mirror and he looked at his head. He thought it was all good. I left it like a horrid Christmas circle in the middle of the <laughs> We went to the prophet and somebody said, hey, man, what's up with your head? He said, what? He said, look at your head. He, that dude chased me for like two hours. <laughs> I was trying to kill him. <laughs> he, he, he put a yarmulke on him. <laughs> yeah, he, he got me, man. He got man, me. Hey, man, hey, I left a spot in the middle of his head. And everybody was like, damn, dog. What happened to your head? He said, what? He looked at me and I took off running. He chased me. <laughs> yeah, he got me good on that one, man. The guy, he got me good on that one. I was trying to kill him. <laughs> hey, hey still plenty of time. <laughs> hey, Mike, 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 Mike was that guy in our room. He was so neat. And me and Charles were like, <laughs> we didn't get the Mike. Mike, come out. Mike, you know, Mike, Mike reading his Bible. And I was like, we turn on, we turn on, uh, what, what that group was from Texas? Uh, 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 Ghetto Boys. Yes. Ghetto Boys. Guys, right, can you turn that off? <laughs> I'm telling you. I'm say, man, F that. Yeah, I, that, that's too good to be saying F that. <laughs> I got started in high school with a broken arm and had like 20 <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> and we had so many great times. Oh, uh, yeah. Being that 36 real, building, man. Yeah, it was something that in there. Yeah. And Smitty, you know, I got I got great stories about you too, dog. You, <laughs> me? You know, He's you in the building. You were number 63 in high school. That's right. You came to college. You got that 45. You you ain't know how to act. You thought you was you thought you was slim and good looking at that point. Hey, you, 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 you thought you was just alive. LT, let me tell you. Hey, when when Jimmy Johnson was recruiting me, I remember we, we talked on the phone and he was trying to get me like make a decision and uh like well coach I, I i don't know what i don't know what i want to do <laughs> like what number, you, what number you want to wear i say uh well coach if if i could not like the rest of the day, I did before the because mike barrow is up to 56 you know i don't know what the pecking order was right there that ain't right man <laughs> Hey, these these guys are all good guys, though. They're all good guys. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I, seriously, I mean, I, I listen. I asked uh, Darren to remember this. I asked him and Leon and Claude to go with me for a fundraiser at my temple years ago, <laughs> and they did. They came, and people took yeah. pictures, signed autographs. They were great. It cost me four hundred dollars at. at um, <laughs> Christine Lee steak, you know, in, in, in Goldstream afterwards to feed those bellies, but still, it was, it was a fun night. <laughs> they hustled. Hustling. 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 Jeez. <laughs> True. True. Look, here's the picture. Where was the screen? See, there's Leon and there's Claude. Oh, and there's yeah. Me, and there's Darren. Wow. Yeah. Wait. Wow. Remember Who that, that? Darren? Yeah. That's me, Leon, Claude, and Darren. Claude and Darren. What year was that? Um, what year was that, Darren? Early 2000s? Maybe what? 2004 or 5? He, he just showed like, a picture of y'all going out to Me, somewhere. you, Claude, and Leon went to the temple. Then I took you guys to Christine Lee's, and you bellies cost me almost $400. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even remember what year that was. I was doing a violation, so Darren on Darren don't know nothing about that. No, no, it's not the way. It was in the 2000s. It's long gone. Uh, you know what I'm asking, though? Why I asked the question? I'm like, I wonder when this started. When did this start? You know what? Gary, yeah, that, that's a good question. That's a very good Probably question. Lamar. It wasn't when you guys were playing. I don't, no, I don't remember when you guys were playing. No, that uh -huh. came later. That's what I was asking. Yeah, what I that because I'm like, yeah, that's we weren't doing that back then? I thought no. we were. No. No. no, 
We was doing a salute, baby. Oh, we, yeah, doing, salute. we was doing our own thing. Like, <laughs> you were, you were, you, you yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, remember, I remember Jesse did this. He was dancing. Yeah, Jesse. Yep. Yeah, Jesse That's did that. Jesse. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we, 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 we had, making we, up tape. Was in trouble. We had individuals. Yeah. Remember, remember that tape they they did where they had the violation tape. Okay, this Kings, and Kings I rule. think ninety five percent of it was us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What yeah, not to do? Was, gee, it just happened to come after the, the Cotton Ball game. Gee, what a surprise! Right. right. Yeah, exactly. Two hundred some <laughs> penny yards, man. Oh my gosh. There, were, there were some things that were done in the Cotton Bowl. You probably get arrested for today. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but they were selling out though. Stan Thomas was talking, talking to, talking to us to Russell. You know, I mean, it was crazy. Yeah, it was crazy. It was crazy. Hey, it, was, it, it was personal. Like yeah. Hey, LT is, is, uh, is yard huh? LT is Bernie still there? Man, he eating his mahi mahi, man. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, you can ask the question. I can relay Whoa. it. To no, here, here, here. <laughs> Ro, 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 Rohan and I, we don't want to beat what was supposed to be a dead horse. But, <laughs> but um, I want to know, and Lamar, I want your opinion on this too. What is the difference between getting the ball with a minute left and getting it with 30 seconds left and, and having to you know, do, do the one-minute drill? I'm sorry. I can't see me being a head coach telling my team let them let them score. Okay, so now you get the ball back with thirty seconds instead of. I, I understand that. I really understand that, and it, it's a receiver in me because I'm thinking I'm gonna make that fucking play downfield. I'm gonna do what they did. It's going to state. Yeah, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna make that play. I cannot say Lamar. Hey, 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 hey uh, Michael Burrow. Hey, Darren Smith. Let him score. What's your record? What's your team record? I, mean, yeah. I, just, I just don't see it happening. What's your team record? <laughs> I, I don't know how I don't know how to do that. Your defense, what's your defensive rank? You can't make a stop. Yeah, and, and they look bad the most of the game. So yeah. I, I would I would have let them score with it was 58 seconds to go. I knew it because I got to do a strategy right there. You got more than enough time to get a field goal. More than enough time. This ain't this seconds. ain't the ego one though. This ain't like the ego call. This is a call where the strategy is Florida State. We fought what we losing record. We're, we're I'm trying to save my job. I got to find a way to win. You got it. I need, like, I need a field goal to get into overtime. Yeah, or 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 or, or to win the game. Or, or, or yeah, like he like like, like Bruce mentioned earlier, they right. stop the two points conversion. You know, they had, right, they stop the two point conversion. They're only down one. They only have to get to the thirty five yard line. They don't have to score a touchdown. You can't to fight. Game. You fight on the inch yard line, bro. With the clock running out with no timeouts. What are you doing? What, 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 clock, what are you I'm doing? gonna let him score. It's gonna the clock's gonna run out. They go, what are yeah. you doing? We know. I, I think no, Gary, right? when, when did never they see the ball again? How much time was on the clock when they scored? Twenty six seconds, maybe. It's something like twenty six uh, seconds. Yeah, yeah, that's that's not good. Michael that's Barrow, good. You, you could stop that quarterback sneak from the one inch line. Well, yeah, I mean, to me, it, hold on, let me let me say this though. I understand what Rose said, right? My mind said and, with this team, like, with this team, like that, Michael, well, hold on. with this team, with this defensive Rose. record. With this no squad, doubt. he's sitting so there with the Cortez state. and Russell in front of him. Of course, yeah, he can say that now. They're not going to be on the inch yard line. Of course, Michael but, can say that now. <laughs> but, but, Ro, I definitely understand your point. You got to know who you are, right? Obviously, this this defense has been inconsistent, you know, last two years. So, I definitely and the strength. If you had to go with the strength, the strength of the team is the offense at this the last three or four games. Right. And then also, you know, I mean, with your kicker, you got a kicker that can get that can make it you happen. Get the ball so back. I definitely so I definitely agree with Ro with what you're saying. I'm saying that's just not my mindset. That's not our thing. Let, no, me, no, let, no, me, we... let me let me I understand where you're coming from, Ro. You gotta assess your team, and that's what happened. And hindsight 2020. Yeah, they probably should have let him win in and get an offense more time, you know. Because you're not a player now. You're time, the coach, like, you know, They waste a lot of time, you right. know, bet between the calling the timeout when they did go for the situation. But let me say this. Also, Florida State, though, I mean, they showed their hand. They went in this look like all they did was like, okay, we're doing a quarterback sneak. I'm like, what yeah. are you doing? Like, they showing this. Like, I'm like, I'm like, oh, my. It's like an open book test. I'm they like, right oh, through the middle. This. You know, you, know, you gotta so go. This is when you gotta sell out. All right, for yeah, us, because they was yeah. like, okay, this. Oh, they put all their cards on the table. 
that they're running the sneak. They didn't even try to disguise it, like get in the normal backfield set. They came in some like we gotta sell out free victory type setup. And I'm like, what are they doing? <laughs> I, I, so I they think I caught in the head too, and I'm like, oh, this is crazy. I would have pissed everybody try to get it down. I mean. But yeah. I understand what you're saying, Ro. I definitely understand what you're saying. And it's, it's easy to say hindsight 2020 after the fact, you know, like, look, because they end up having, we had, we stopped them, then they stopped them once, then stopped yeah. again, but then was offsides, then yeah. gave them another, yeah. you know, so gave them Come extra on. play. So, I mean, it, it, it self inflicted wounds again, you know? Yeah, yeah. Four, 14 penalties, 14, 15 penalties? Yeah, 14 penalties. Uh, over 100 cent yards. Down. Yeah. Okay. But but Michael, so you Ro, guys, I agree with you, Ro. Ro, I agree with you. I mean, yeah, you got to know this but, defense inconsistent. A, I probably let him go put it on my offense to win the game. But, but yeah. Michael, you could have stopped that play. You could stop that quarterback sneak with from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 The ball I mean, still got to go back. If they're, if they're yeah. sure, I was surprised they came out in that formation. They came out. They was like they they were committed to our play. Yeah. I'm like, okay, we about. I mean, we'd have pissed everything. We'd have stopped that play. Trust me. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in the I mean, in the I would have I would have, I would have, I would have tracked that quarterback everywhere he went. I would have went, you know, once I saw because he ran. He tried to hit a, a dead center first time. Second time, he tried to go to their to their offensive right, right? Then the third time, I would have just now, so I would have just tracked where he was going. All right, we would have, we would have, we'd have got that. But we would have pinched our line, right? Make the dudes bounce it out, get penetration. Yes, he's that lose yardage. Because like they, they, they kept giving it away. I mean, they were like, this is what we run. It's not like they had a normal backfield set and the quarterback doing like that. And then because you're thinking they could do something else out of it, right? But they were like, no, we're going to do quarterbacks. They were committed to running the quarterback sneak. Oh, man, I mean, it's an open book test, man. you you got to take advantage of that, you know? Yeah. I'll think of themselves, man. I'll think of themselves. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And, and, like, and like I said, it's just, yeah, it's just bad. But, Ro, I agree with you, Ro. I understand. You got to know who you are defensively. Strategically. I mean, we can't, sometimes we can't play dead in the Cowboy movie. So, hey, let them score, put on the offense. Yeah, yeah, it, we got to be, gotta be real. Got to be real. Like, with the yeah. team we have, we got to be real. They don't even let you tackle yeah. no more around here. Yeah. But I mean, self-inflicted wound. You what? What? What would have happened if we wouldn't been all sides? I wanted third do? down. They just right. Been, right. Did the same thing. So how you jump off sides? Self-inflicted side wounds, that, man. Huh? But, you see, that's the discipline stuff too. How you jumping off side with that time to? You crazy? That's crazy. Well, it, it, I don't think he jumped off side. I think he lined up off side. Right? <laughs> Is that what happened? That's worse. And, but, yeah, but it really didn't make a difference. I mean, even though he jumped off side, but because. It's yeah. still the, the time. It just it just killed the clock even more, you know. Right, right, right. So I mean, Gary, so what what's your question? Is that is did I answer? <laughs> well, I, I, I think it's a fascinating debate because you can look at it so many different ways. I mean I mean yeah. that was an interesting situation in that game the other day. And I am with Bruce and Rohan. Yeah. I would have let them score and given my offense a minute to go get a field goal. Right. Would you have yeah. gone for it on fourth down, Gary? We talked about that before. I, 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 I think I would have gone for it on fourth down. Too. Because, the because they, they, they had to score a touchdown, Bruce. Right. You know, you know? if they needed yeah, a field, field goal, goal, I think field goal would have given us an eight point lead. Yeah. And you know, you can't, like, the worst is overtime if they score yeah, on I, a two point conversion. No, I, they would have run the clock out probably. I, I think I would have gone for fourth and one at the yeah. at, at, around midfield uh, and thinking that if I don't get it, they still got to go 50 yards. I thought they were inside yeah. the field. No, it is type of defense. Bro, bro, you say we're bringing up the bro, defense. Bro, you say we're all offensive team. Huh? So we yard. You say we're an offensive team, so we should be able to get a yard, right? Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. Like, what? <laughs> oh, no. you bro. You can bro. Hey, bro. Hey, 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 you got one right bro. tonight. That's enough. No. No, but to Rose's point, remember that uh, how many short yard situations right. that we come up short. You know, right. a yard. Wow. So, right. Right. I'm not taking that. I'm playing field position right there, right? At that jump, I'm playing field You're position. Punching. I'm not giving you short field like that. No way. That I like you, Coach Smitty. Are you, by, by the way, by the way, guys. Are, are you in that situation or are you going for it? I'm going I'm to go for it. I'm more, you know, that's just how I am, my personality. <laughs> uh, oh, by the way, guys, understand something. Coach Smitty. Coach is Shamanad right now. Yeah, we gotta give him a shout out. The coach is Shamanad. He's yeah. in the coaches. So he is making those decisions. 
Well, I'm on the defensive side, so yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, put it, put it, put it. Damon Jones said, "Let him score." No, he wouldn't do that. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, he wouldn't do that. Damon said, "Let him score." Y'all are looking at each other like, "What?" It's just against. Hey, as a defensive guy, it's hard for me. <laughs> I did that one time. If, if Mike, you ever been in that situation in your pro career? We did that one time. Never. My pro career, and everybody looked at each other like, yeah, that's what I mean. "Is this is this a joke?" You know, nobody believed it was real. We see, and it, and it didn't work. It didn't work. We still didn't score. We let this team score. But, but you see, I mean, we all felt bad. But you know, by the way, you know, by the way, you know, by the way it's Darren, ego. The players we play with ego and those things, but the coaches. Have strategy. They have a time. They're watching timeouts. They're seeing how, what they can do. Game planning. We're playing with ego, and look what happened. We don't get it. And by the way, guys, <laughs> Darren, you played down there twenty years in the league. Mike, right? you played twenty years in the league. Jeez, go around. You played about five or six, and you got some years in in in, uh, in uh, Canada. Um. There's a lot of experience right here. And to hear you guys talk about it, how that call is coming from the sideline, let them score. Let them score. I just don't see any of you no, guys. We're coaches now. But we're coaching now. We're 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 team is four and ten. We're we're we're, we're Florida State. <laughs> four and ten. It gets worse every it get worse every <laughs> <night. Ten? laughs> No, I'm saying our team record, 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 record. We're like five and fifty-five or something. <laughs> like, we're, what difference does it make? We're not going anywhere. When I'm saying, <laughs> Florida State, though, we gotta, we gotta find a way to win this game. We can't. It doesn't matter. Yeah, like, we came back. We had a five-point lead, and we blew. I, right, right. I know, but that with, right. with, with that last little touch right there, we we because of we got it. What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Yeah, when we when we came back, Bruce. I, you couldn't tell me we did. It wasn't over. I just knew. Right. We had right. That right. You I know. know. You're always nervous. Always you nervous. What a knife defense. Yeah. So, I mean, hey, it, hey, hey, Michael, it, when the Giants played the Patriots in one of the Super Bowls, I forgot which one. When Bradshaw <laughs> did he did he fall down at the one because they didn't want to get, they didn't want to give Brady the ball back. Was, I, I care. I think Sutton did. I, I wasn't there, but I think Sutton did happen like that when he tried to did that, and somebody ended up pulling them in the end zone. Right, you know? right, right. right. Dragging and, them. And, and so more, more recently, of Brady. They didn't want Brady to get the ball back. Yeah, most recently, I think zone. Atlanta tried to do something like that, and they end up uh, uh, the defense allowed them score, and they end up losing the game. You know, <laughs> yeah. I mean, they it ended up working for the defense advantage. Uh, right. I think it was uh, Todd point. Gurley that tried to do it. He tried to like kneel, and they end up pulling them back in and pull yeah. them in, and they end up. So the, that's that's one of the positive sides of letting the score worked out. You know, yeah, right. I mean, you got to use it, it's a strategy thing. You got to play the clock. You have to figure out what's going on. They had a minute to go, yeah. you know, with the, yeah. and they stopped them a couple of times. They lost time by not letting them score. You got to play the right. percentage. It's like Thirty it. seconds. Bruce, Bruce yeah. just so you know, these two guys. Smitty hmm. and Mike Barrow, boom, bam, bam. <laughs> they played in a couple Super Bowls, Mike. Wow. They played in a couple Super Bowls, man. Darren, how many wins you got? About two? Two Super Bowls, yeah. Yeah, how much you got, Mike? Mike you, play, you played in um in the in the Super Bowl. Yep, got it, got it. Yep, ended up losing. That was with okay. Carolina? I need, no, that I was with the with the Giants. We lost oh, against the Ravens. Oh yeah, and then yeah. and, yeah. and, and, yeah. and Dwayne lost against starts. Right now. Dwayne starts in the pick six, and he's yep. he brags about that constantly. Yeah. <laughs> what, what was that experience like, guys? I, I need to know this. And man, I know we're getting off the whole college thing, but what was that experience like? Because Bernie's sitting here, he's showing me his ring. <laughs> I mean, what, what was that experience like, dog? I mean, come on, bro. Tell you, boy. I let Smitty Smitty since he won to. <laughs> but you know, for, for me, first of all, it was crazy because it was my rookie year. You know what I mean? Like, who goes to the Super Bowl champion in rookie year? Yes, and, yeah, yeah. And, K-Dub, which is right? Huh? K Dub was there too. K Dub was yep. there too. Yeah, me and K Dub, and so Ooh. it was good. It was good. He was there to have good support for me for each other. You know what I mean? But <laughs> we and, um, and, and Russell was there too. Russell was there. Yeah. My, my homeboy Godfrey Miles was there. He was yeah. 
Florida. Well, but, you know, but, you know, we grew up in the same neighborhood, so yeah, God from my. <laughs> <laughs> so, but man, it was it was crazy, man. It was, uh, and you know, I, as a as a rookie, man, I was a starter, so it was really a blessing because I felt Amazing. like I really contributed. You know what I mean? Right. So, um, it it was it was it was weird, man, because you go to a team like. Like that, and and Mike, you probably experienced it too. You, you never, you never expect, expected to play with these guys. I'm like, man, I'm with Emmett Smith, and right? Aikman, and you know, yeah. And, yeah. And, like, huh? and Bernard Cole, huh? And Bernard that's right. Big yeah. Pete came in, did his thing. <laughs> so, uh, but it, but it, but it was crazy, man. I, I felt like I was part of a rock band. I was just happy to be there. <laughs> right, <laughs> Mike. What'd you feel when you that boat and went to that deal? Well, well, mine was a little uh, on the negative, so I got a negative experience because they got the <laughs> confetti going for uh, Baltimore. You know, so so it was a it was a horror for me. I mean, obviously you're 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 happy you got there, but yeah. I mean, I mean, it's, it's only one winner. I don't care what your record is, only one winner every season. That's yeah. whoever win that Super Bowl, and so for that. It just leave it just left a bitter taste in your mouth because you like, man, you gotta win this thing. You get this far and you lose, you know. Uh, I mean, arguably look back at it, we lost against you know uh, one of the best defenses of all time, you know. Uh, but still, I mean, the fact that we lost and it, it just hurts, you know, from that that standpoint, you know. Hey, like I you got, got a, you got an NFC you got a, a, a NFC championship ring. Like, what is that, man? You know, like that's like a participation trophy or something. That you, get, you know. Yeah, I know. You, want the, you want the I whole thing? You and the world. Bernie's, Bernie's Bernie's ring at Miami. He's got the ring. If you look underneath, it says "Thank you, Kenny Calhoun." Right on the bottom. <laughs> yeah. No, actually, there were, yeah, and I, I love Kenny. It was a great of course. play. But there was 48 seconds to go and two timeouts, plenty of time to come down and get a field goal. Yeah. For that. Come hey, on, I'm going to chime back in to Lamar to your awesome question to, to Smitty and, and, and uh, Michael how, how we felt on that Super Bowl and that type of stuff. Almost like for myself with the national championship, whether it was our first one in 1983 and or that Super Bowl in 1993. And, and MB, you said it perfectly. You know, I'd, I'd had three AFC championship losses and I had the participation trophy, you know. Yeah. And that's something that, you know, is an issue for us. So, you know, um, when people ask you, how do you feel about winning the national championship? How do you feel about winning the Super Bowl? Um, my mentor and, and my football father is is Howard Schnellenberger, and he said from the very beginning, "You're going to do that. You're expected to do right. that. Right. That's going to happen." So, bluntly, you know, I used to say, you know, when when people said, "How do you feel when you won the uh, the national championship? How do you feel when you won the Super Bowl?" You know, I used to say, "Man, I felt great. I felt awesome." But the truth is, and I think a lot of us could probably say it, it's a sense of relief. Yeah. <laughs> it's relief you know we're supposed to do that i didn't want to let smitty i didn't want to let you down Come right. yeah. you know you guys are lock and loaded man on defense doing stuff making plays um mm -hmm. bill belichick eric mangini were some coaches of mine and one of the things they used to say is you don't want to be it right you don't it. I don't want to be the reason why we right. didn't get this thing. Exactly. So, yeah, I said it was a great feeling, but it's really one heck of a sense of relief because, you know, this is, I don't want to let you guys down. Yeah. You know, right. so we're here for it. Hey, hey yeah. for you three guys on the bottom, I have a great question for you. What was it like playing with The Rock? <laughs> you mean Dewey? Who's the, who's the Rock? You mean Dewey? Dewey, baby. I'm going to go home and watch this one on the podcast because I'm fired up for this. As the old man, I'm not I'm not adorable like Cinderella, but I do turn into a pumpkin as I trend towards midnight here. Yeah. No. I tell you what, I, I don't know who that five foot three, two hundred and fifty pound lineman they got me looking like on that show. But... <laughs> That's unbelievable. <laughs> I saw Bruce Hebers, uh the guy who was brew. I like, wow. Uh, <laughs> Bruce was looking like a kitchen. We we all know that's total opposite. <laughs> <laughs> you was looking like a pop one of linebacker, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm gonna, what, I'm, what, I'm what roster? I would have hated to see what Rohan looked like. 
Jesus. <laughs> I, I didn't see that. I missed it. I missed it. <laughs> You matter. Go Canes. Hey, but honestly speaking, though, playing with The Rock, we, 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 you know we love The Rock because we all are fans of wrestling, and we used to love his devotion to, you know, in the locker room. And he might not have been as great as Sat, but, you know, he came on, he did his thing. He made some plays. It was fun playing with The Rock, but we make fun of him because he's such a superstar today. Yeah. That everybody makes fun of him because he's so huge now. So he's right. a most famous hurricane. So you know, everybody likes to talk yeah. about how is it like playing with it. But Rock, Rock wasn't Michael mm-hmm. Barrow, Darren Smith quality of player, but he's he's a hurricane. And he, no, but, but right. think about this, bro. Bro, think about this. You know the t- the type of defense alignment we had. Yeah. This dude played as a true freshman. Yeah. Right. You wow. Know what right. I'm saying? Yeah. He came in as a true. I think you know. I think injuries probably did him in more than injuries. Shoulders, the shoulders. You don't read the book, huh? You don't read the book, huh? No, but he had a college. <laughs> Y'all remember this dude came in? He had a college body. Yeah, yeah. I remember all that, dog. I'm yes. sorry. No, nah, that joke. Was, hey, he was swole. He was swole <laughs> was all, like, all I know is all I all I know is. All I know is all my kids know all his freaking songs. Yeah. 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 They say, you know him, daddy? I say, yeah, they go, oh, you're the greatest. <laughs> all right. Well, I'm better. I was better than you. <laughs> right. 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 Yeah. Leon's got a bunch of stories about going up against him, too. Because yeah. Leon was, boom, he just knocked him yeah, out. Yeah, but that's yeah. everyone. Leon was knocking everybody out. Yeah. <laughs> All I, all I remember, all I remember was this guy would come up and try to talk to me. And I had nothing to talk to him about except for his daddy. Because that was a Rocky Johnson fan. Rocky Johnson, right. And his uncle. I grew, I grew up in Florida. I watched Snooker. Gordon Soley. Yeah, yeah. Jimmy Snooker. Uh, uh, so when he signed him, I was like, bro, don't talk to me about nothing unless we're talking about your daddy. <laughs> I treated the guy so wrong. And oh. a couple of times I said, hey, Dewey, go get me that Gatorade. Okay. <laughs> hey, like he I told you, you guys are mean. He it's, came with yeah, me one yeah. time. That's he a came bar, with man. Me. Yo, he came with me one time. Like he, said, people. <laughs> he said, he said, hey, LT, I heard you guys are going to get into some mischief tonight. <laughs> <laughs> mischief? What? We were going to throw eggs across the lake. You know how we did. I mean, I mean Mike and Darren, because they were good guys. But we were throwing like, hey, they had a concert over there. We were going to throw a. Hey. He said, I heard you guys get in some missing. I said, man, if you don't get your square ass from around me, you're going to get us caught, dog. Everybody's <laughs> oh gonna get us caught talking about mischief. What year were you guys? When he was a freshman. Darren, you said he, he played as a freshman. What year were you guys? You're older than him? We were, yeah, we were yeah, older. We're older. We're older. We're older. You're older. Darren, we're myself, you're Mike, we came in the same year. Yep. Yeah, maybe. Well, maybe two years older. Yeah, I think there? two years older because yeah. I think. Uh, Bro, did he uh, come in with you? Year one year before me, came with Carl. Yeah, that's right. One year before me, nine. He came in in ninety. Okay. Came in Carnival year. Yeah. Yeah. Carnival year. Yeah. Hey, how about what do you guys think about another guy that 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 I know some of you played with? And um, Mario Cristobal is the guy that everyone's talking about as the potential next head head coach at Miami. Uh, what are your guys' thoughts on that? Do it. <laughs> Somebody say do it. <laughs> I, I say do it. And, and, and these guys are going to contribute to help Miami get them. They'll be put up four or five million. Don't worry about it. We're going to get this time. Well, what, 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 what you got to have, what you got like a nine million buyout, right? Yeah. <laughs> then you, on top of that, then you got to pay them. Uh, rightfully five six million make you make what five million now with Oregon and I don't, I don't they got 25 I mean, million example, Mike. I, mean, I would yeah, love to have Mario you know? cut a Mike, they got a, Mike they got a war chest 25 million dollars that the university's putting up to to straighten out the athletic department yeah really Ooh. Okay. is that enough in your that, that, Gary that Nike million. money that Nike money can go long though boy oh, I don't Nike know. Came yeah. You no, like you today? No, this is the university saying we need to get this fixed and we need to get this fixed now. And um, we're going to buy out who we got to buy out. They fired Blake James yesterday. Wow. They're looking yeah. for a new athletic director here in the next few weeks. 
most likely. Okay. Then they're going to go get – well, I, I believe they're going to go get a new head coach. They haven't fired Manny yet, but I believe right. that's going to happen. Um, and they got enough money to, to, to pay everybody and pay okay. the buyouts and okay. do whatever they got to do to get this thing moving in the right direction because well, the president has figured out what Miami football means to the university as a whole. Right. And, and uh, it took a while. You know, he's not an athletic guy. Um, right. But, and there's, you know, there's pressure on him to to straighten this out. And, and he's stepping to the plate. He's saying, we're making money at the hospital. We're finan- The university's probably more financially healthy than it's ever been. And, he, and, okay. and they, they have decided as an institution, we're going to get this fixed. Oh, and great. they're making moves. Beautiful. Right. Well, they look at some of these hurricanes we got. Yeah. yeah. So, I, I mean, as far as if they end up, since we're playing this hypothetical situation, I mean, obviously with Mario, man, I mean, just the success he had. You know, at other places he's been, you know, uh, I mean, he knows how to recruit, knows how to develop. Uh, seems like he's getting the most out of his players and stuff like that. Have those guys ready to play. So, I mean, I think it's a good choice. I mean, with him, uh, you, like you start with the U, like Chazinski, right? Uh, uh, shoot, I mean. Yeah, who, who yeah, else? Mario with Chudinski is the offensive coordinator. What do you think yes. of that? Yeah, yeah, no doubt. No Chud- doubt. No, that's crazy. That would be good. No doubt. I, know about I would yeah. try to get also defensively, I would try to get like Tiger, have him come back. Tiger, home. yeah. You know? I, I'll, try to get Mike, I'll try to get Michael Barrow. <laughs> no, yeah. I'll try to get Tiger, Mike, man. Michael Barrow, Michael Barrow, Michael Barrow. Michael Barrow, Michael Barrow. Michael Barrow, Michael Barrow. Michael Barrow, Michael Barrow. Try to get Barrow. Bernard Clark, you know. What about try Greg Marks? Thing, man. Get people that's invested with the program. <laughs> but the but the biggest thing, man, you got to you gotta recruit. And you got to not only recruit, but you got to do a great job of developing your players. That's you know? the key, man. That's the key. And that, that's, that's the, the thing. Key. You got to identify them. You got to develop you. them. And then once you develop them, you got to make sure whether practice or game, they come ready to play. That yeah. you put them in position to play, you know, to, t- to capitalize on their abilities and stuff and, and, and make sure they come ready to play. And, and that's the thing, you know. I and mean, we, if we could go back in, in time, man, I wish they would have hired a, a Butch, you know. I, I mean, Bush, he, I, 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 I that, wish because he, I mean, you talk about a 2001 team. I mean, it, it, he resuscitated the program coming off probation and all those things right there. And he developing, but Bush knows how to identify players. He knows how to develop them. And he knows how to make sure well, that they come right. He's out of a job. Remember, the challenge with uh, Harry Butch was, he left. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You know what Just what because saying? the way he left. Yeah, the way I, he I left was really the challenge of him coming back at that time. I I I understand, Wait, but I was saying who? in the beginning, hey, I was if, like, man, hire if, Butch, you know. If Michael, Michael Vick, Vick Butler, Michael Vick did Brent, three game shows, then Butch back to, to all that. But I was like, uh, they need to hire Butch. No, I understand they, what you're when saying, Butch. I was like, man, they, they should have hired Butch. I no still hire Butch right about, now. You know? but, he, but he has forgotten, man, he still doesn't know. I don't want to be that one, but I am. It's the truth. That guy. I don't I don't know now if Butch can reach these young kids like that now. No, no, not be a head coach, but be part of the staff because he can recruit and he can identify and help develop these kids. That's what Butch is great at. He yes. Can, he can spot talent 100 miles away. No doubt. No doubt. That's why I don't care no how old he is. He can still do it. No doubt. But, yeah, so, I mean, yeah, that, that commitment, I mean, yeah. It's great. But who, what's your thoughts on the athletic director? You can go anywhere, Mike. I mean, you, you've got, you can go the traditional route and get a traditional AD. Uh, they can. Um, you get you got Alonzo and Gino. Gino, yeah. Who are trying? Who are trying to get the job? Yeah. You got Twan Russell, who's athletic director. I'm sure yeah, Twan Russell would love to yeah. throw his name. Where's Twan athletic director? Where is he at? At, at uh, Thomas. He's at St. Thomas now. Yeah. Oh, St. Thomas. Yeah, he's at St. Thomas. Okay. Yeah. yeah so. Well, yeah, that's, that's my call, man. First, I mean, though, Mario right, definitely. If they make that, if they decide to make that move at head coach, I think Mario definitely is is is. You got to go at him. Yeah. Uh, you got to. You, you know? got that type of money. Give him a merch deal. Also. Yeah, and I, I think with the next coach, man, it got to be a guy too who. Who really wants to be here, not a guy who yes. wants to yeah, he has to pay. Right, right. Yeah, exactly. I agree with exactly. that. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah, why yeah. I don't want Lane. It's gonna take some time. Guys. They'll be here and they'll be gone. Yeah, I think yeah, Barry yeah. will be here for 15 years. He's Somebody like, you can wow. build with for 10, 15 years. Yeah, yeah you need that type of you need that, man. 
someone that, yeah. but a good person. We've been running rampant with all these different coaches. You don't yeah. know these people anymore. Yeah. Here, yeah. Here's what I see, guys, when I look at college football. I, I see so much parity. I mean, everybody's the same. You look at the ACC, everybody's the same. All these teams, they take turns beating each other. Um, except the premium, at the top. Except huh? at the top. You got Bama and Ohio State. Yeah, but, yeah, the top, just, yeah, but everybody else is the same. And, and the premium is you got to find the guy that is going to elevate you above that. And yeah. and he's got to be able to recruit. And that's the, that's the beginning of it. Yeah, I think if yeah, we you, you, him, it won't be that long before we say we're better than Clemson. Yeah, because I think this team is still we're still sitting on a powder keg. Got to get the right guy in there. This could uh, Gary's been saying it for the last year or two. This whole thing could be turned around with the right decisions. The decisions have been wrong. The first decision has to be the administration says we've had enough of this crap and we're going to spend some money. Yeah, yeah. That's what's going to happen. So I believe it's going to happen. Is Mario yeah. going to be the guy? I'd like to think so because that would solve yeah. a lot of problems. And you yeah. have to expect a guy like that will bring the right coordinators and the right staff and have the right attitude, just like you yeah. guys have. And it's going to change. Yeah. It's good because the attitude for these kids now, to me, when they say they're going to Miami, it's, I'll be going to Miami. I'm taking my talents for the next three or four years. They're halfway out the door. Hey, before they get hey how about this? They had two rotation guys. Um, one of them was a linebacker, Michael. Imagine this, a guy in your linebacker room, the week of the Florida State game, deciding we're not playing anymore, we're leaving. They had a, 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 a rotation safety and a rotation linebacker just walk out. and say, we're, going, we're leaving, we're going to the transfer portal. Right. The week of the right. Florida State game with three games left in the season. Right. You, and you're seeing more and more of that, guys. Right, right. that's crazy. Who's, who's those guys? guys? crazy. I Where think it was something that, that was probably unexpected. I mean, it was always when they got with transfer, at least you finished the season. And then right. you, you know, decided well, to you had to. Team. You had to. Now yeah. you can just get yourself into the portal and let everybody know, here I am, so they can get ready to pick you for next year. And right. you have choices. Right. You're not in the middle of when the season's over, everybody else is looking you to go in the portal. The You're already a few weeks ahead. I guess it's a strategic move on their part. Yeah, but the same thing is going on with firing these coaches. <laughs> you yes. know what I mean? Oh, they're they're firing these coaches two, two, three weeks out. You know, hey, they like recruiting coming up. We need to make sure we got um, the guy in the, in the right place. To, right. To, to yeah. Class. Well, so, for, first of all, practice. guys, first of all, guys, guys <laughs> talking about transferring when we were playing. He gonna get beat up in the locker room. <laughs> he ain't gonna make it out that thing. He gonna he gonna take some L's on the way to wherever he going, like Rutgers or Stanford. Or, <laughs> he gonna take he gonna take some L's, dog. He, we 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 wasn't playing that. We gonna give it to you. You came down here and we expected you to do big things, and because there was competition, you gonna you, leave. You you hold out. Competition got you running yeah, around. Competition. Now, what are you teaching your kids? Tackling, because we've had this problem for the last couple of years. Tackling. Um, I know your practices back in the day because I used to go and watch them. You guys beat the crap out of each other. What are you teaching your guys now? Are you teaching tackling? Or you're working with with donuts and dummies. Yeah, we, we do that. Um, and I know Mike probably is. is um, you know, we do a lot of the things that Mike used to do in Seattle. We still do some of that hawk tackling. Uh, but I mean, it's something you got to do, you know, each, maybe every other day, you, you, you probably can't do it every day now, you know, but it's, it's something you have to do at least every other day, you know, to make sure guys are still used to Absolutely. tackling. And, you know, I know all the restrictions in college, but they got to be a part of your either individual drill or it, that's something that's fun. Every, and, and, you know, when you look at Miami, you're like, man, they the worst, the worst, uh, the worst. Uh, everybody, you know, we're the worst. Yep. <laughs> So it got to be something that we're just not working on, and, and you know, it's just like it comes. It comes along with turnovers. You got to practice that too. Yeah. You got to work on turnovers. If you want to create turnovers, you got to practice those things, and so it becomes a mindset. And, yeah. and one one thing I want to add to that, Smitty, is that you know, one one thing I hate is like when somebody's losing, then they want to go back to fundamentals. Why even leave <laughs> fundamentals? Exactly. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it starts, oh, we're going back to the fundamentals. No, why even leave fundamentals, you know? Yeah. Like mm -hmm. I, like being a coach, right, I can tell how, how serious a coach is based on how much time they give you for individual. You know what I'm saying? Because right. right. what they normally do, they, they start off good in the beginning. You get like 15, 20 minutes individual. Then once the season starts, you get like five or ten minutes. Five minutes. Like, Come on, no. Hey, so, my, so, you know, I'm in a but, high school and I'm fighting every minute for my individual. 
You know, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Because that's because everybody wants to want to coach the scheme and all yeah. this stuff, man. But it's about fundamentals, fundamentals man. man. And when I'm you talk about skins and all of that, yeah, still, exactly. So you yeah. gotta, you gotta like have those fundamentals in place, man. That technique going over constantly every day, every day. Yeah. I mean, yeah. whether it's tackling, whether it's turnover, you got to be creative with it and you got to work on that stuff every day, man. Just like program was automatic, man. That's one thing we did at Seattle. I mean, every day, man, we're working on the fundamentals. It's not necessary because of the layout. You can't bang every day, so you got to right. get the mental reps and you got to get the technique. The reps. You got to yeah, get he, that stuff in. You got to find creative right. ways to get it in and working on fundamentals. So fundamentals got to be a big part of it. Yeah, you know? hey, 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 and, and, hey, but guys. these guys are tackling dummies and donuts, but the, ta the the angles that they're taking are so bad because they're not tackling anything that's moving. They're hitting something that's stationary. So when the, when the game comes, somebody's moving, the, the, the angles are just so bad, and they're missing yeah. the on guys. But but I wouldn't even say like it's it, tackling is about want to man yeah like exactly. like like I told Rohan Rohan man probably one of the hardest hitters I ever played with Bingo. He, wanted, he wanted to lay somebody out you know <laughs> he wanted to run through somebody a lot of the times man these dudes don't want to put their face in the fan I call it I it's either you, either you're a roll stop or a hitchhiker and what I mean is you gonna like make a wall and bang them or you gonna wait till he run by and try to jump on his back. You can't do and a lot of times I'm seeing dudes don't want no part of it. Well, so grab. I wouldn't say it's about the, the tackling the dummies and all that because it's creative ways. Like in NFL, we're in Seattle, right? We didn't we didn't bang, we didn't put on fast and bang a lot, but we worked in the fundamentals and the technique of how to take the proper angle. It's, you get those dummies, you still working on angle. You still right. we give us one drill where we where we pin that hip and we're closing that hip down. And yeah. you working on those angles, you work on it. It's still back to fundamentals. Fundamentals. You can't you can't make that excuse. Well, we're not banging. No, you can find a way to get it in right, even without banging each other. You fast. still get those fundamentals. Your eye discipline, tracking that hip. You know, yeah. it's it's fundamental Inside stuff. That, that's what we did. And and we and we practice it and we preached it and then boom and you, and you see you see the results of it. So hey, hey I, guys, I, don't, I don't I don't give that excuse. You know, hey guys, I know I what you're trying to say, but you can still get around with it and, and still be able to execute. <laughs> right, it but it hasn't happened. Hey guys, but they haven't listen, done it. It's not Bruce. Bruce, hold on, yeah. Bruce, hold on, hold on, Bruce. Listen, uh -oh. I just came I just came up with another story about Michael Barron. Uh -oh. I'm gonna tell you, Are what you buddy, eating your chicken wings. I was yeah I was. Cause my daddy said, "Don't eat them." I know, and you're still doing it. So, I'm gonna you know, I was, I, that ticket Wayne didn't stand a chance. But uh, listen, <laughs> listen, uh, <laughs> Michael Barrow. Let me tell you about this guy. <laughs> Michael Barrow resigns from being a head coach. I'm mean, not not head coach, but being a coach at Miami. I call Michael Barrow. We're about to play them. Louisville against Miami. Let me tell you what type of Miami guy he is. I said, Mike, I don't want to know what happened. It is what it is, but what they trying to do. He said, LT, I tell you after the game. <laughs> and I had Bobby Petrino sitting right beside me. He said, call your boy Michael Barrow. Call him. And see what he says. I go, oh yeah, he's gonna tell me because that's my roommate. I said, what they trying to do on defense? This is what type of Miami guy he is. He said, Well, T, I'll tell you after the game. <laughs> <laughs> I said, What the fuck? I mean, screw my leg. I said, What the hell? And then my and uh, Petrino was like, What type of freaking Miami guy he is he? I go, he's that Miami guy. <laughs> real, I mean that that to me, man, that, that said a lot about who you were the first. And, and Patrice so, thought that Mike was gonna tell even well, you. Well, he just he thought. thought that because we were roommates, because I oh, it up, okay. I said, Oh, that's my roommate. Because you yeah, know in the staff meeting, in the staff meeting, Mike, and you know this, you try to find mm. any type of connection. Yeah. And I said, no doubt. you know, I said, Hey, that was my Old roommate in college. Room. They was like, they were like, Oh, you know him? I said, Yeah, I know, I know the linebacker coach. That's my dog. And it came out, Michael Barrow resigns. I'm like, oh, he going to give us everything. We finna win this game. I said, Mike, what's, what's the deal, Mike? Mike, you're evil. I, I will tell you after the game. 
but that ain't the way I operate. I, 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 we, actually, we won the game. Yeah, you won the game. We won the game, but the fact that he did that, it let it let me <laughs> understand who he was as a person, man. He's just like, look, man, I'm a Miami guy. I can't, I can't. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to do that, man. Why would, you, you, would you have told him if he called you up? Of course not, because you're a Miami guy. You wouldn't have done it. No, nah, hell no. I told his ass. So that's my dog. <laughs> he got he got me drunk the first night on campus. And let's talk about that, Mike. My <laughs> dude. Oh man, <laughs> let me tell you something. So we we come up in this thing, and you know I'm from Gainesville. I got my parents. They, I love my parents, but they was they were pretty strict on me. I ain't really do a lot. I get to Miami. I said, "What well, the hell? I'm staying up all night the first night. I'm trying to party. I'm trying to meet some females. I'm trying to do all this." So Mike comes in, and he brings some this drink called that I never heard of called Pete Schnapp. Uh, <laughs> Peppermint schnapps. And he's, he says, he says, uh, nice and sweet. He go, he go, man. Nice and sweet, sweet man. right? Yeah, well, that's sweet. Drink. I go, I go, all right. He said, LT, you might want to slow down. I said, oh man, this, this is good. Sneaky. Man. Man, uh, I think how, I was how, how much liquor does it take a 135 pound guy to get drunk? Dude, <laughs> I think I, I think I would sleep by 12:30. I get for, for for years. I hear about the first night on campus where everybody was meeting girls and partying. Oh, and what was my story? Drunk to sleep, <laughs> knocked out, knocked out. So um, you know, for me, being with Mike and you know Darren and. Of course, Rohan. You know, I got some stories about you, Rohan. When I, uh, when I, you know, y'all, y'all beat me in Madden, and I, I, uh, I threw up in y'all bathtub. And so, <laughs> did I throw up in y'all bathtub, but did I put doo doo on your door? It was oh, one of those Lord. things. This guy's yeah, it was so nasty. I was, I was. I ain't like evil. Evil. Uh, evil. You know, old, old Smitty. Old Smitty was just a good dude, though. You know, old Smitty. Smitty. Yeah. Boom. Mike, don't tell my secrets, Mike. Don't tell me. <laughs> no, no. I, I got him food. I got him food. Yeah, you got him food. No, it's many, it's many good people. But, but, hey, but, Ro, Ro, good people as well, man. I remember Ro, this before selling phones was selling phones like unlimited, right? <laughs> and he had one. phones cost you like maybe $2 a minute. <laughs> Ro used to have the brick phone, right? The brick phone. Walking in the locker room. But, Ro, Ro, I need to make a call, huh? You, you yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Everybody, he let everybody use everything, man. Oh, you know? man. Rose, so uh, he had that brick phone with the little <laughs> black antenna, right? Like this. So it looked like a walkie talkie. But then, but I mean, Rose was very generous. You were like, Rose, let me use the phone. All right, man. I mean, whatever like, Rose had, like, I mean, it was yours. You know? Like, was that the one you had to wear the bag with? Was that the one you had to wear the bag with? Yeah. So we had funny, some guns, man. man. I had that phone with no one. Oh, oh. Now, I got to tell another Rohan story. I got to tell another Rohan story. I, and, and Darren, you may fill it in. Uh, you got to fill it in for me, right? Rohan was arguing with some walk-on dude. What his name, Tank? Yeah. Y'all remember that? Probably. Probably. They were arguing about something, maybe about who's the strongest or something like that. Or something. Ro, tell the story, Ro. So... I don't know what happened. Maybe they didn't get a rep. We was on walk on. You know, I'm on scout team. I don't know if they didn't get a rep or what happened. They they claim they're better than me. You know, because they were they're a little shorter than me. But you know, two brothers. So I walk by their locker room and I'm like, "What are you saying to me?" And he said, "You heard." They said, "You heard what we said." So I just I think I just knocked out the both of them at the same time. <laughs> They were arguing about like who's stronger than each other. They have something, man. They did like a bench press contest or something. Did y'all do a bench press contest or something? Roll or something? Y'all did. I, I beat them or something. They didn't like that. I went about this, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Angry. I and never. Me. One time Yo. we was watching film. Rohan was criticizing us, right? He like Smitty. Why you not running full speed to every play? You know, like sometimes. <laughs> The play is all the way on the other side. Right, of the right, you, know, right. you save a little bit of energy. You know what yeah. I mean? I say Ro. Right now, because Ro was in that rotation, and many times Ro would come in, and he was one of, you know, he was real good blitzer. And so yeah. Tubbs loved to use him as a blitz. He'd come in, yeah. get blitz, go back to the sideline, right? Exactly. he come back in, get his blitz, go back to the sideline. Like, why are you not going? I say Ro. 
You come in here, these few little players. You went to you, <laughs> you play full time. I came back that next offseason, I visited him. You're like, Smitty, you right. Hey. <laughs> I can't do it no, 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 no. Smitty used to say to me, Oh, bro, don't run unnecessarily now. <laughs> you better learn to say it. I remember this is, I remember this, right? My first time playing, and, and then I had to run on the kickoff. Then I got to go play the linebacker. Then I'm on the punt team. I'm like, wait a minute. I'm not going to run on the kickoff and line up and play defense. <laughs> oh, yeah. It changed. It's different. No, no wind. No wind. <laughs> it's different. But you know, my first yep. one of my one of my favorite memory was after y'all left. You know, we went to Boston College, and Tuberville he kept me on the, off the special teams, and it was kickoff. You know, and I'm on the sideline, and I'm looking at the Boston College field, and you know, it looked like a mound like this. It's a crown. And yeah. look, I'm yeah. like Jesus. <laughs> that field is huge, and all I'm thinking about is this, bro. When the when that whistle blows and they tackle the, run, the guy running the ball, there's no Jesse. <laughs> it's you, right? It's like I mean, playing for UM is like everything is mano a mano. You can't make no mistakes out there. I mean, yeah. it's crazy. So man, I used to my heart was like, no Jesse Armstead to like, okay Jesse, I'm coming for you for a couple of plays. Nah. Right. Those are yeah, nice experiences. Yeah, those are the good times, man. And I know for you, LT, probably with the same. I know for me and Mike and Jesse and Ro and uh, you know, all those guys who played, man, what made us was made us, you know, better. Number one, we had a great D line, but yep. we were very competitive with one yeah. another, and we wanted we wanted to be the best, man. I wanted to I wanted to get more tackles than Mike. Mike yep. wanted to get more tackles than me. We, we were sneaking, watch film. We was, you know, we would, we would just do extra stuff. We were more competitive with each other than worried about right. other guys out there on other teams, and, that, and that's really what pushed us. And I know LT, y'all was like that at receiver, you, Kobe, yep. and, and yeah. Dub, and Spence. Yep. I mean, that's what made us so great. You know what I mean on that yep. right field, but we was going at it. So damn, I it's a different world, world it. unfortunately. You guys, the world's I mean, not no. the same. You got guys just trying to get by now, you know, yeah. right. getting through. You know what I mean? Where it's not about being the best. Just right. Like, All right. I made it through. You know. I got one more Mike story. <laughs> oh, you know, Gee, Mike, Mike, you're popular Mike, tonight. <laughs> well, Michael, no, see. Michael Barr is a legend. Michael, Darren Smith, Jesse Armstead, they're of course, the, that's the, the Bermuda, Bermuda Triangle yeah. legend. So I'm playing. You know, Mike came over to me one day. He said, he says this was like my proudest college moment of my whole career. He says, "Yo, tell me something. How you tackle so hard? <laughs> but, <laughs> wait, but I'm having Michael Barrow like you, Mike. You're killing people. <laughs> I'm like, what are you asking me, Mike? I'm like, so I didn't really know how to answer, Mike. You know, I'm like, is that a trick question? <laughs> I, said, well, I just stay down. low, and I just stay low, and I go hard. You know." And I, Mike, Mike reminded me of that all the time. Like, yeah, I, I remember that, you know. But you know, I mean, I'm, I'm staying low for me is like Mike's knees. <laughs> <laughs> He's already low. Yeah. That's, that's where he got low, that right. name, the rat baby. Hit that right. hole. The he rat boy. That he, hole, when I when I when I made that suggest when I made that uh, comment about rat boy and I called him out, he just leaned all the way back. <laughs> <laughs> We remember that we were we, yeah. were, we were older, and um, you know, obviously as a young guy, yeah, definitely um, big brother. He, he fit he fit in. Yeah, and we yeah. gave him nicknames. That's what we, we did. did. When you when you, yeah. when you fit in, that means we love you. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah no true. doubt. No and there's some guys. But there's some a little guy. guy, guy he, had, he knocked a lot of people backwards. He really did. If oh you watch his he, he, he was strong. I mean, a lot of people. Backwards. That joker had that big old wide back. He was only like five eight, five nine. SpongeBob. 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 He, he, he used to bring it, man. Fearless, you know, heart of a lion, man. Try to knock somebody out. And like what Dan was saying about just I remember his game, man. We used to be like, man, that's my tackle. No, I was here. Man. <laughs> like, we running and racing to get there. on the field, man. Trying to compete, man. Stat trying games. Trying to compete and get better, man. It, it was it was not no jealousy or nothing. It was just like, man, just trying to compete to be the best, man. Darren, you know, you what's the stat game, Darren? What's the stat game? 
Shoot. Well, for me, shoot, Florida Long State. Long State. State. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Damn you. <laughs> it, 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 no, but you can't get good stats against fam you because you only no, gonna no. pay the half. Right, exactly. right, right, let's right. go out and watch the band. Right. You know that ain't We're good. watching the band. We're watching the band. <laughs> We're, watching, yep. We're watching the marching 100. Shout out to the marching 100. <laughs> so these guys are crazy. These guys are our team. These guys are the only players I know. These seniors here, like when we were playing fam you, they're these guys, these guys are ran the program. They're on the sideline instead of in the locker room watching the band. <laughs> I have a question for you guys. If Mario comes back, are you guys going to be allowed on the sideline, or is that a school policy that's just never going to change? Because I would love to see you guys back in the sideline. That would yeah. mean to me that everything's back the way it belongs. A lot of players. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think? I, I think uh, it's going to depend on um, the relationship that we're going to try to mend and try to get better with whoever the AD is. Right. And once we do that, yeah. I think uh, we'll make there, there'll there'll be some decisions made. Obviously, the rules have changed. Um, I think a lot of it had to go down. I mean, I, I think it started with the Bush Davis era, and then it when um, when the Nevis Shapiro thing went down, it kind of screwed everything mm -hmm. up. And so, I think what we're trying to do right now, as a, collectively as a group. Uh, the 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 former players. We're trying to figure out how we can how we can help and how we can figure this out. And we'll sit down with whoever the AD is, and we'll try to figure things out. Because you know, let me tell you something. For me personally, as a player, and Mike and Darren and probably Rohan could say the same thing. When you have those guys on the sideline that you can pull from, their experiences not wanting to let them down yeah uh it, it means something to you man it's yeah. it, it, it's it's infectious because let me right. tell you when when I, when I, yeah when, when i saw when michael, actually on the sidelines they really michael Irvin, michael Irvin on the sideline yeah or brett perriman or a blade brian blaze or even benny blaze with with the number 36. i mean <laughs> it was you were not trying to let those guys down right Look, that's what it boiled down lamar how do you decide who gets to go down there not just side? on the sideline, but they're telling you some things yeah. that they see. Hey, look. Right. Hey, exactly. Come on, now. Right. You're talking about the best of the best. Right. Giving you direction and advice. You know what I mean? Right. Like, oh, man. You know. Right. But how do you decide who? And Bruce Maryland and Cortez Kennedy is saying, hey, look, do this. And you know what I mean? I, if I was the coach, I'd be like, yeah, do what he say. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> what, how do you decide yeah, who you gets say, to go? How do you decide how, who gets to go down there? Who? Goes on I'm the, sorry. I mean, yeah. the former right. players, man. If you're yeah, a like former he, player, every former player can't be on the sideline. Who, who decides? Who decides who, who decides who is going to be there? I don't know. Yeah, For that, a while, we never had that issue. I don't right, know. Right. Oldest Fowler, old, old Fowler was down there every game. Oldest Fowler was right there. Right. Jesus, right. 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 he was walk on. Jesus, he and down there. Right. And, and, and but hey, that's, but a, it, but it that's a good. That's a good problem to have. You know, yeah, it was because he was a and, and that that's and right. that's the thing when you when you talk about just the like Darren said, man, guys coach you up on the sideline, telling you what they see as a coach, an extra set of eyes, man, do this, do that, you know, like oh yeah, I didn't see that, boom, you know, and and man, that's just priceless. But then yet yeah, it breathes that brotherhood, that family atmosphere that we had, that connection, you know, like you know, you know the Melvin Brightons, the guys before us, they coming back on the sidelines, the Irvins who we never played with. But we look, we grew up watching them, and then they coming back pointing to us. It creates that that bondage, man, that family, that that brotherhood. You know, you know it, it brings the old guys. with the new. Maybe huh? you guys in every position, every game, or something, or you, they come. I'm sorry, up say it again. Like no, I'm saying maybe they like maybe you have like two linebackers and two receivers every game. No, nah, I wouldn't even limit it, man. That's I think it's a good problem to have, man. Have yeah. on the side I mean, line, wouldn't, man. That be, wouldn't that be cool to have Michael uh, Irvin walk up to a receiver and say you should do it like this? And he said, "Oh, that's priceless." But what do you do if you got Michael Irvin, Be Brian Blades, um, you know Brett Perryman, Andre Johnson? You gotta I gotta do my thing. That you would go on. You could have what, fifteen receivers down that's there. That's we got a protocol. We got a protocol. That's Lamar. priceless, man. Lamar, let me not forget Lamar. I said Lamar. Yeah, like, <laughs> like, like that's, that's like chaos. You can't hey. have 15 guys. You know what I want to ask one question? Not, you know, 
it's it's like it wouldn't be chaos, man. That would be priceless, man. Mike, listen. Wait, we will and we will saw it. It wasn't chaos when we were down there. No, no it right. wasn't at all. Not, like that was priceless. most of the guys would be down there watching. One guy would go down and say, Hey man, y'all need to tighten up or this. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't all of us yeah. going, it was not exactly. chaos. That's what you don't right. understand, Gary. Right. It wasn't like 30 <laughs> guys talking to players. It right. Was, we were all down in one corner or down in that corner, and we right. kind of split up. And one guy went down and said, "Hey, man, y'all need to tighten up, though. You got to be yeah. at least right here." It wasn't right. like that. It I was. A, it was. A... Go ahead. Go ahead, bro. How come we don't ever talk about Darren Handy? <laughs> the big cat man. Handy. Hey, he, he was man. like he. That, when I used to look at him, I was like. No way. <laughs> the big old, the big old calves. Man, the big old calves, like, dog. Monster. Like, I'm like, <laughs> wow. <laughs> hey, hey, but I tell you what, I tell you what, one of the things, man, I, and I was in the league for years. Mike, you was in the league for years. Other guys from other teams, man, they said, mm. boy, y'all was different. You want to be like y'all. Yeah. It was yeah. about y'all. Exactly. It was, exactly. you know, yeah. I mean, all the time, guys from Florida State, Notre Dame, Florida, yeah. no matter what, they were yeah. like, Man, y'all, y'all are different, man. Y'all are connected. Y'all got a different right. type of thing. Right. Going on so, and I think we need that, man. We need that. Right. We do need it. And and dudes used to come back and train. You know, they yeah, train yeah. with us. I mean, it's just you just kept it going, man. It's it, yep. you just kept it going. That connection between the old and the new, and just that connection, man. Because really, it's not. I know we talk about obviously, you know, if they make the coaching change and having the right coach in there means a lot, right? But mm -hmm. once you get that going, man, it it really when the players take over the team, meaning like it was the older guys that taught us, like the Randy mm -hmm. Shannons that taught me, Darren, or the older guys teaching the young guys. It was the players that players coaching players that made the yep. difference. You know, yep. like yep. it was the players. It was the players yep. that taught you, coach you up on and off the field, and mm -hmm. how to play. And that's the thing that Miami had, man. You, yeah. it, it was yeah. just like running. It was just run yeah. by itself because the players was pouring into the players, and yeah. and right now you're not you're not getting enough of that. You know you're not getting a whole lot of that. You know, I'm not, I'm not allowing you it. You know, I mean, right there with the third stand in the thirty six building. Somebody else used to stand up before us. Somebody called the room. Who you know? Da, 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 da. Yeah, who is this? Who in my room? Who, yeah, who in my room? room? You know, and, but it, it's just that connection, man, and yeah. and that was all part of it as well. And, and so I say, getting back to the roots, Gary. So, how, who, who, who's on the sideline? To me, that's minimum out of issue. Let yeah, everybody. Who's ever in town that day? Go. Wants to go, go. Yeah, yeah, hey, yeah hey, Just let hey, everybody guys. go down there, man. But just having that and guys, the connection between the old and the new. Just one thing, somebody one, somebody saying one thing to that person, the right thing to, to push them over the top, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and and just do that, man. Just c connecting them with the old, understanding the standard, understanding like. I remember when I went to like Notre Dame, right, and recruited thing that in their locker they they had the jersey number and they had all the players that wore that jersey number, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, and yeah. and and basically like you're next, what you're gonna do with it, you know? But then now if you're if you're telling me if Michael Irvin, Ray Lewis, Darren Smith, those guys on the sideline, you know, and you're able to pour into those young guys, man, they know who they are. I mean, it's just it's a profound effect, you know. Yeah. Coming from a player is 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 so much. It, it has so much weight, you know, yeah, than far as yeah. just coming from a coach. Especially you know? a professional. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Hey, um, Lamar. Lamar has daddy daycare in the morning. He has it in the afternoon too. Oh yeah, we gotta go. <laughs> hey, 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 guys. We we have gone over, man, and I want to thank you guys. <laughs> no, 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 they can't leave yet. I got one more question, Lamar. Yeah, yeah, okay, all right, for the time. Don't worry about it. No, no, I got one more question of each of you guys. Give give us one thing that the Miami football program can do, needs to do, uh, to get better before another season begins. Uh, Smitty, you start since you're on the left. Oh side. man, you put me on the uh, spot, huh? Mm, let me put you on it, dog. Uh. One thing, one thing, man. I mean, honestly, go I to mean, the Rolex. <laughs> <laughs> to the, I, I, I used to I be, mean, man. Mike, 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 you didn't hit that, Mike. You hear that, Mike? <laughs> I mean, I hit the, I hit the small super, but man, really get back to fundamentals. I just don't see it. You know, right now, 
we we got to we got to get back to the drawing board. I think they're expecting high school kids to come out and be world beaters, but if, if they're not trained, we got to develop kids. And yeah. that's the difference that you see. I see freshmen who were great players, and now they're older and they're they're playing less than they were when they were good players. Yeah. And that's right. fresh. That that doesn't make sense to me. You know what I mean? When I see, uh, you know, some young guys, who I'm like, oh, this guy's good. And then two or three years down the line, you mean no play same, time. or he's regressed? That's telling me that's development, that's coaching. So I think we, we got to get stronger in that area. Right, go ahead, Bam Bam. I'm sorry, what, I didn't hear the question, Gary. Uh, the, the question is what one thing that the Miami football program should needs to do, be, do before doing? another like, season begins. It's like a plan. Wow. Hey. Oh, skip. Ro, you uh, go. <laughs> all right. Well, I, I got a podcast. Ro, you go with that. All right, like, all right. well, I know Darren said as far as developing players, right? Yeah. yeah. And fundamentals. Get back to fundamentals, man. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I mean, I was, I'm a big, big component of that. Let me, I don't know. Let me think about that. All right, Rohan, what do, you, what do you think? I would say we need some, um, like, people. some type of um, our organization needs some of the people that understands the tradition. Like some of our, like what we talked about, the type of AD Wait, we're bringing, we coaching that? staff. We need, we need, we need the because when I used to go there, the coaches that were there were from Jimmy Johnson, and they're like even when Darius Erickson came in, he still had a mixture of his guys. But you had the old guys there, like Randy Shannon started as a GA, and then he made his up went all the way up. You know what I mean? So Michael Barrow was there as a GA too when he started out before he went to coach in the league. Right, Mike? Am I right, Mike? Did you no, I, actually, Randy made me a, a coach, position a coach. coach when I started. Oh, you didn't do the GA thing? Uh-uh. No. Well, you no. can't. Well, bring in some he's one, our... he's one of the chosen ones. He was the chosen <laughs> one. <laughs> well, we need that. Because like like how we talk about Randy Shannon being there, you know, as a coach, we, we need we need some, you know, like we miss Coach Keo. Like, come on. Those are, you know what I'm saying? Like, we, we, we're we used to these hurricane coaches. You know, so we don't, we miss some of that um, traditional coaching, coaching and um, the players around the campus, like Mike was talking about earlier. You know what, Rohan? The, the program has not been the same since right. that day that they fired Archeo, Don Solinger, um, I think it was um, Dan Warner, and um, I'm trying to remember who the fourth oh. was that got fired that day. The linebacker <laughs> coach. Okay. Yeah, uh, Hargraves. Yeah, hard bleed, bleed, yeah. Those yeah, guys every, bleed orange and green. Keyhole, yeah. are you fire Keyhole? No, but ever yeah. since that day, the University of Miami football program has not been the same. Oh. Yeah, I was looking, man. They've been like what one in eleven the last twelve bowl games or something like that. Oh, yeah, that is accurate. Yeah. Crazy. It's yeah. crazy. It's hard to, and they got blown out in a lot of them. Oh. If I can yeah. answer that question as a non-player. I would say let's knock the sense of entitlement out of these young kids the minute they get in the door. That's got to stop. Right. These guys got to stop with that. They think they're going to start from the first minute they get there. These guys all have to right. learn it and watch it and watch it and learn and be tackling dummies or whatever. These kids come in and up. I don't play. I'm getting the hell out of here. Well, man, 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 got bullied. Benny kind of got bullied into playing the freshman this year. Yeah. And yeah. then look what happens in the Florida State game. Um, that's a really good true freshman in Cam Kitchens. But he broke down in his coverage fundamentals on that. Right. I, I just don't play. like the situation they put him in, though, Gary. I, I just don't like him being right, on that. Right. I agree. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, guys, uh, let me answer the question, too. Uh, for me personally, the fact that uh, my mom and dad are, are on my behind because I was eating chicken wings on, on the show. Um, <laughs> And so with that being said, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I don't even know if, I don't, I don't even know if uh, my mom and dad are ever going to watch the show again. They're, they're, they love Darren, they love Mike, they love Rohan, but they are on me because I was eating chicken wings during the show. <laughs> well, they warned you a long time ago. <laughs> they, they did warn me, but I had to bring it up. Bo Camper wings, oh, yeah. they're, you, you they're desirable. 
Okay, <laughs> they really are desirable. So I had to throw that in there. I get a shout out to the sponsors real quick. Like, so y'all go ahead with the question. I had to throw that in there. Mikey, Act like I was Mikey. talking about something special. Hey, well, go ahead, Mike. What if they need insurance? What 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 could they do if they need insurance? Oh, we got to go to Advanced Insurance, Ryan Collins, yeah, if, man. If you, got, if you guys need insurance, <laughs> you got to go to Ryan Collins Insurance, nice. man. You know, hey, Ryan Collins is Ryan Collins is my insurance, man. <laughs> See, I told you, I told you, my guy does hey, we, it right. And hey, we keep it in the family. Right. See, that's big. what I'm talking about. He right. is big time. Right. Advanced insurance and financial. He will do it up for you, man. Right. Listen, we got all kind of sponsors going on right here. We got Crowded, who is going to have um this weekend. Have well, it's tomorrow. Actually, tomorrow. they're going to have the uh, the hurricane uh, round table where uh, guys are going to come in and and we're going to talk about. How can we make this right? How can we bridge the gap? How can we do things to help this program? Uh, it's not going to be a Manny bashing program because that's not what we were. We're not about that. Right. We're about trying to get this program back to where it can be respectable, first of all. Facts. Respectable. Because we've lost a lot of respect over the day, <laughs> over the years. And so um, it's going to be fun, man. I, I think it's going to be fun. I'm going to go down there and check it out and and listen to what those guys have to say. A lot of old school players, a lot of new school players, and it's gonna be a great, great event. Great event. Mikey, say something, Mikey, about this answer. Here. No, I'm just trying to. I'm thinking. I'm, I'm just thinking about the question that he asked. I mean, that's a good question. I mean, I, I guess just man, give us some thoughts. But I like what Darren said. I mean, we talked about it early, going sticking to the fundamentals. You know, uh, right now, you know, talent is not enough. My talent, right, you right. can't get where you need to get to just based on talent alone. Right. You got, like, we talked about developing the talent. And so you identify the talent, then you got to do a great job of developing the talent. And a lot of the talent, our talents was developed on that green tree uh, practice field, you know? I mean, competing against one another, where our practices was harder than the game. And not only develop our physical skills, but develop our mental skills, Absolutely. you know? Absolutely. Uh, uh, you, I mean, Bruce, I think you asked the question, who would have, who the one the game between 2001 and us. And for us, like our mindset, I remember I was, when I came back at UM and they had like in the weight room, they had like a old UM Florida State plan. It was the 91 game. And I forgot some of the details. I started looking at the game <laughs> and I was like, man, how did we ever come back and win that game? You know, right. <laughs> but during the whole time, like I never thought we was gonna lose that game. No I never thought we was gonna lose. And even after the first kickoff, man, I like man, we because of what back. we did. What you said, Smitty? I said even after the first kickoff, I just said we will we'll get it back. You know? Yeah, what I mean? exactly. So, Tomorrow. but it's just that mindset when you talk about developing, Gary, is that mindset where not only you developing physically, like we felt like we were the hardest working team in America, but mentally, right? Where we're just the we knew the game, we understood the game, but just the mental toughness, right? So I, I think that's where the developing those guys, where I don't see the development side from fundamentals. I don't see the practical, like, okay, yeah, this dude, the ball is, it's like inconsistent out there, you know, yeah. uh, overall as a team. And so I think getting back to the fundamentals of, of that and getting back to like uh, understanding who you are and just the whole fundamental, I think I think that that's the big part of it as well. You know, you know, Gary, I don't he, know he what the practice happens a lot. I don't know none of that. I'm just for me, it's all about we were made on that green tree practice field. We was made on there, and, and it's just back to developing. And right. Gary, he practiced what he preached because I had when when Mike was the linebacker coach at UM, I had the opportunity to go out there. I would spend some time with him, and I mean that is really what he was doing. You can see he was working hard, mm -hmm. developing guys, teaching guys. Sure. And so if you 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 see a guy, um, um, I'm I'm drawing a blank now, number fifty two. Uh, the line oh, like Denzel. 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 You see a guy yeah. like Denzel, you know, great talent, but, you know, you take him to a whole nother level, probably in a scheme he probably is not really built for, but Mike was still able to help that guy. We had some linebackers that were okay linebackers, yeah. but, you know, he really allowed those guys to play probably above their heads. Sure. And, uh, and I think that's what we have. We're, we're, we got to get those guys up mentally as well, man, as far yeah. as the understanding the game. Yeah. yeah, it's hard to reach these kids sometimes mentally. They're just they're tuning it out. But well, you got to know how to reach them. You got to know how. Yeah, to yeah. Well, Everybody's not. It's tougher. 
Like everybody's not hey, listen, I'm in high school, so believe me, I know, you know <laughs> it's, it's so many distractions, you know what I mean? Right. It is uh and so you gotta try to reach them in, in different ways. I mean, some kids is you know, and, yeah, and they're all dealing with issues, you know, right. some of them girlfriends, some of them yep. stuff at home and struggling in yep. school and hey, boogie. All of that hey, boogie. Stuff. I'm boogie. almost like a counselor now, you know. Hey, boogie, right. boogie, right. boogie. <laughs> Boogie, y'all got a big game this week. Let's LT, you game. just jealous you never had none. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look here, man. Y'all got a big game this week, man. We do. We do. Yeah. We, we going up against all the crew. We play Edison. Edison. They got a lot of talent on that team. Oh, that's yeah. Luke's team. Yeah, mm -hmm. they got a lot of talent on that team. You know, they went up to Niceville to play that they team. Won. They should have won. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And so, you know, we – we, we know we got, you know, a lot of work that we're preparing for them. They got a lot of tools that they have. I think, you know, they have a receiver that's committed a to receiver. Clinton. He's yeah. real deal. You know, yeah. he's Is a this a playoff there? Yeah, this, yeah. this, this, this is second round. And I'll then you around. and then I'm always nervous, LT, because we were we had a we had our last bye. We had all bye. Then the first round we had a bye. I don't, I don't like stuff like that, you know. Right, right. <laughs> much time for high school kids, yeah. you know what I mean. So, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, man. So I'm, I'm always nervous. I like, I like routine. I like it yeah. the same every, every time. Or <laughs> but, uh, but Coach Damon Jones, he does a great job of, of really trying to get the guys going, and and, and uh, so I think it was good for us too. We had a couple guys that needed some, you know, needed some, uh, some recovery. So that was good too. So yeah. But we look. I look. Look forward to it, man. I've been having a great time. See what you're talking about, Coach uh, Mike. When you was at Homestead, you know what I mean. Being able to 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 work with those kids at a whole another level. It's just yeah, awesome fun. And, yeah, and, and like what you said, it, every kid is different. But one foundational thing I always use: kids don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Absolutely. You know? yeah, wow. And when you, when they know you care about them, then you, true, you true. go the extra mile. That man, you'll get their ear and they'll start listening yeah. to what you're saying. You know. Yeah. 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 Guys. Hold on, guys. Wait, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, man. Let me say something, man. Go ahead, go ahead, bro. Go, go, bro. Go, <laughs> go, rap boy. Sure. Go, rap boy. We can talk some football, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's ten thirty-seven. Yeah, we gotta, I gotta go. go. I got this is the latest we've ever met. Mike, Mike Rivera, eight thirty to nine. He's, he's in the middle of. He got a birthday. Your son has a birthday party. Yeah, he had Derek, a birthday. Yeah, early. Derek, we celebrated. So he good. His uh. His, he's at he's coming out of practice. Yeah. But he got to go talk to his son about the practice and roll. Ain't my no telling what left. country. What ain't no telling what country you my in right now. Left, man, she hugged me. So she was a, she came to see and, me. And, and, and Bruce and Bruce, look at Bruce over there. He's like, man, how can we? How can we? How can we talk some more negative? Get rid of somebody's stuff. That was Bruce hey, that was, he's one for one, Lamar. He, he is one for one. He is one for one. <laughs> He is one for the, the one. voice of the fan has spoken. That's right. I think, that's listen, right, that's man. my job. My job. Guys, we, 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 definitely, we definitely appreciate having you guys on, man. Much love to fun, you, man. man. Thank you. Yeah, for, appreciate it. Thank you for coming Thanks on. For coming man. on we'll do love you guys. Love you guys. Love you guys. Take care, man. See you, buddy. See you guys. Respect me, brothers. Oh wow, that was great. That was that was that was real cool having all those guys on, yeah, man. That was awesome, man. We, we were, kept on till midnight, Lamar. Oh man, I, that's what I was. I was. I kept looking at the time. I'm like, man, what? Dog, oh, we. I got to go home first of all. I got my kids. I got to get up in the morning. Oh man, Bruce. Uh, I, I have fact, one hearing the fact, in the morning. That's the it. Fact I, that I, you, the fact that you stayed up this late. I'm like, hey, woo, woo. Yeah, but, we're, but we're not done yet. We got we got some yeah, stuff. You got a few more here. minutes. Am I right. off? All right. LT, uh, Yo, I'm first done. thing, the holiday season is approaching yeah. very quickly, okay? And right. um, there's a lot going on mm -hmm. at All Canes. And, um, you know, I was, I was talking to Harry uh, earlier today, and uh, he's got what they're calling an original uh, Bo Bradbury Canes piece of art uh, that, that they've made, a, I, I think, a holiday card out of. Oh, okay. I like um, that. You know what you want. And that, that's pretty yeah. nice, right? I, I like yeah, that. So um, you can go by the store, take yeah. a picture um, with you and your family with this masterpiece. And um, and then you could have, get photos, photos. Um, and post them <laughs> um, with the hashtags Mr. All Canes 
and underscore Bo Bradbury by mm -hmm. 12 15, uh, December 15th. And I believe you get a fifty dollar gift card if I'm understanding. Okay. This, if well, I'm understanding I mean, this correctly, hey, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't doubt that with Harry. He's gonna give out something. That's what Harry does. Yeah. So, um, yeah. I mean, uh, starting next Wednesday, uh, yeah. uh, November twenty fourth, and going through the 29th, they're having their Black Friday sale uh -huh. at All Canes, and yeah. uh, you can get everything in the store at twenty percent off. Right. So, um, they're closed okay. for Thanksgiving, but. Um, you can even, even those Sean Taylor jerseys or no? The, the, the what? The Sean Taylor jersey? Is that twenty percent off too? I think he says everything in the store, so I would think that would include the Sean Taylor jersey. I mean, um, look correct, at my stepkid, my, my wife, and my stepkids are all Taylors. That's their last name. I should get that. Yeah, that hey, that that's a great jersey, man. I, I'm yeah. telling you, man. I, I wanted, to, I really want that jersey. And you know, when they had the two thousand, the greatest team. <laughs> ever um okay. the release and they had all those guys wearing that jersey i was a little jealous man that that is a nice jersey that is some that's a keepsake that is really a keepsake. i, I actually was thinking about buying it and giving it away on the show but i don't know if that's we, a should, we should do it why not why not we, we got that. we got so many listeners we got so many people that tune in we should do something like that we got to give something okay then i'll do it i'll go down here and get it and i'll do it and maybe I have to like give away a card or something too. Yeah. You know I, mean? <laughs> I should give away. Well, you know, you give away the jersey. Give away some of those bones from the wings. That's what. No, you no. Be. Well, my parents are so mad at me. I, I give away a card or something like one of these, uh, <laughs> one of these uh, playing cards, or something like that. We give away one. Oh wow! Well, look at that. Yeah, we give one of these away to the to the people who something like that. We, we I got a bunch of them. I got a bunch. Right, of so them. But, hey, listen. Go ahead, Gary. Um, no, I was just going to say, you know, they, they have special Black Friday weekend hours mm -hmm. for everybody that wants to go down there and get and take advantage of the Black Friday 20% off special. Um, Black Friday, they're open 9 to 6. Um, Saturday, the 27th, they're open 10 to 5. Sunday, the 28th, they're open 11 to 4. And uh, Monday, the 29th, uh, they're open uh, 10 to 6. And uh, how many days are you going to go down there, Lamar? How much, how much holiday shopping do you, do you have to do? I might. I got to sneak down there and uh, I got to get some stuff for my girls, man. I was gonna say you got to take care of the girls. For real, I got to take care of the girls, man, and and the wifey. So I got to mm -hmm. I got to get down there. I'm I'm going down there. Put it that way. And you know, as I'm riding down there, I get to, you know, I get to get away from the 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 daddy care, daycare transportation service <laughs> where people are throwing peanut butter and jelly sandwiches at me and <laughs> juicy fruits and all that other stuff. So it's a good little ride and I appreciate that. When I get You got to mount some cameras in your car and make a reality oh. show out of that. No way, Jose. <laughs> it is the, the times that you have called me and we talked about the show, I am trying to, to keep it together and you hear my voice, but yeah. they are, they're demons. They're relentless. He called they're me yesterday, relentless. and I heard all the noise. Every time I'm trying yeah. to talk, he's talking. Oh Shh. man, I love them, but yeah. those girls are, and they're and they're still young. I can't. When they become teenagers, I'm. Oh, when they become teenagers, know. forget about it. I don't know what I'm gonna have to I, I have no idea. I have no idea. I have you no gotta, idea. You, you got to move to like a small town in West Virginia oh. or something. <laughs> Jeez, man. Um, Jeez. So LT, um, we touched on it, but you want to uh, tell us a little bit more about advanced. Uh, Financial and insurance tonight. Well, I mean, I mean, you caught me off guard again, man. I gotta pull it up. I gotta pull it up, Gary. Well, listen, man. All I know is Ryan Collins and it, and 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 what he does over there at his advanced auto insurance. I mean, advanced financial great. insurance. Financial insurance. Is insurance great, and man. financial, actually. Okay, I, I said it wrong, but. Everybody knows what it is. You know, it, it, here it is. This guy. You need that number um, put on the screen. I, I'm trying to find the number. That's what I'm but, trying to find because Gary. Well, I got Ryan's number, number, but I don't know if it's the we, one. We have talked so long tonight that I'm trying to find the number. And thank you, Gary, for putting me on the spot. But I'll get you later. I promise you that. Uh, can we go into another app? Yeah, we can. So I can find it. I mean, let's talk about something else so I can find it. Well, I got all I kinds got... of stuff I still need to ask you about. Okay, uh, go ahead, man. What do you think about the way Rambo is showing out every single week? He put it Probably out at there. a damn high level, Lamar. Listen, he, 
he put it out there that he was coming out, man. I mean, yeah. when, when the guy does that, he's telling you that, hey, look here, man. I'm going to give everything I have to follow up everything I've said. And he's doing a damn good job. I mean, that's, that's, what, I, that's what it boils down to. Yeah. What he's doing now is what, when he came in, we didn't know. We didn't expect. We just said, oh, it's another guy transferring. But this guy's putting it down, man. He's trying to be the best that he can be. And he made some huge plays. Um, you know, bet between Rooster, uh, Mallory, and Rambo, and obviously the quarterback, those guys are making plays, man. And it's it's a beautiful thing to watch. It's a beautiful thing to watch. And Keyshawn Smith, too. Yes. And Ke yes, Keyshawn Smith. I don't – I don't but, they mean, took, but they took Rambo. I wanted to talk to you about this, even though our time is restricted. They took Rambo out of the game in the first mm -hmm. half. Mm -hmm. Why didn't we take their pass rusher, Johnson, out of the game? He he was going in there. He was all over the place. Why can't we double team him? Why Gary, that was some, him? Gary and I yeah. talked about that earlier. I mean, you, you would think that they were going to chip. Yeah. Chip. They tried chip. once and Rooster passed one. He bounced off the guy like a and pinball. It, it, hey, man. That guy, that's like LT. Lawrence Taylor, he played like LT Lawrence Taylor. He played out of his mind. And you know what? The fact is, we couldn't stop him because we couldn't block him one on one. We tried to chip one time, and he basically bounced off. The running back bounced off him. Uh, obviously, I don't know if we had a game plan for it to put another bigger back in, but then that's taking away the element of surprise with Rooster. Cool. And uh, you're taking Rooster out of the game. Yeah, he, he, that 11 played out of his mind, man. He well, plays he's, out he's the defensive money. version of Rambo, Lamar. I mean, yeah. he's, he's smelling the money. He's yeah. a top 10 pick. I just saw two draft predictions. He's top 10 in both. Well, players. you know what? If, he if, he wasn't, really if, he good. Wasn't, if he wasn't top 10 last week, he is now. He became top 10 after watching that University He's Miami. real good. He's, really he's good. all over the field, too. He's not like he's just oh, making it, plays in the back. He's everywhere. It, it was amazing to watch. Yeah. It was, it was truly it was amazing. Relentless. To watch. He's, a good, he's a good really player. good player. Really good um, Next topic, the Blake James firing. What do you guys think about that? Go ahead, Bruce. <laughs> I have nothing against him because I like yeah. him. I've always yeah. been. I've always, he's always been nice to, to me and, more, you know, people I used to be close friends with. But it's time to go. He made too many mistakes. He wasn't helping. The thing with and, – and Gary said this for years. The day he hired Manny without any coaching search – he buried himself. He hung his hat in the, with 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 Manny Diaz, and it's failed. Manny's going too. Um, if people are saying if they don't get Mario, we we'll make it stuck with him another year. I don't want to do that. There's mm. got to be somebody else. There has to be somebody else. We don't want to think about we it. We got to get Mario. We got to get mm. Mario. He's the answer. I don't know if it was too risky and too speculative. Gary, what happens if they said he wants he needs thirty million dollars? Are they going to fork up another five? Are they going to yeah, do? They that? don't need. They don't need that. I mean, this, you got to realize this is not the annual operating. This is a one-time upfront lump of money that they need to deal with all these buyouts and everything that to to just you know buy out of all the mistakes. Okay, so if he goes to the playoffs, he's playing in January. His buyout goes lower, right? Yeah, but those things are negotiable, Bruce. Right. Okay. Yeah, they're the I think we, only I, a three million dollar play, difference. Rather than play the what if on all of that, I think we got to see how these next couple of weeks play out. If if they're in the playoff, there's one set of circumstances. If they're right. not in the playoff, there's another set of circumstances. Right. Then you worry about what the buyout's going to be, and you can negotiate mm -hmm. those things. It, <laughs> it would be in Oregon's best interest to get on with it too in early yeah. December. But but so. the other thing is he's going to want to come here because if we ever get told the he'll answer, come. If, the answer if, if but they, I think he wants if, to come here. If they show him a commitment, Bruce, I think he'll want to come. I yeah, think. I'm reading all over Facebook all these genius sportscasters and all. He's Facebook. not coming. He's not coming. He's not coming. I'm not mentioning it's Facebook. Answer. It's Facebook, Ooh. Bruce. Yeah, well, it's because Everybody they look at everything that Bruce Barry was saying, oh, he's got this great thing going at Oregon and all the money and Phil Knight and everything. Why would he want to come to Miami? There's a million reasons mm. he would there's want to come to Miami. Why. Number one is Oregon. Oregon. There's only, there's, there, they, they came up with the saying, there's no place like home right. for a reason. Okay, mm. that's number one. That was the Wizard got, of Oz, Gary. He's got a mother that's getting older. <laughs> he's got a mom that's getting older. 
yeah. that might be able to see her son coach the Miami Hurricanes. Right. Um, right. Well, you know, while she's still with us, um, he's got a brother. They've got kids. They have. But he, he's got his own kids. They don't. They're not spending their their life with their family. Um, they're you know they're all the way on the other side of the country. Um, his kids can go to Columbus where he went and his brother went. I mean, I yep. could sit here and go on and on and give on you and a on. million reasons why Mario would want to come before I even get to the fact that he want he would want to fix the U. Yep, and he yep. would want to make the U the U again. Yep. And, and um, be here for ten or fifteen years. Like and be here for ten or fifteen years. And I'll tell you something else. You can say what you want about Phil Knight and Oregon and all that stuff. You have a better chance at Miami to be the Nick Saban of the next decade than you do at Oregon. Absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. Hey, 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 by the way, Gary, are you protected from your, the uh, unexpected what? loss to your home due to Mother Nature, <laughs> like a hurricane, or to your auto due to human nature, like a car accident? Let Advanced Insurance Financial Agency help you determine how much and what type of coverage is right for you. Give them a call today at 954-436-4027. That's 954-436-4027. Or visit the website at advancedagent.net. That's advancedagent.net for your free personal insurance review so you can ease your worry and relax your mind. Give me that number one more time. 954-436-4027. I'm going to call Ryan tomorrow because I'm my, my, I think maybe Gary too, but my homeowner's insurance expires like November 15th. You have to renew Go it. So if he can beat it, I'm going to do it. Oh, I, I, I just it, added though. the phone number to the scroll at the bottom. How there you okay. go. There you go. All right. We got it in, baby. We got it in. I am excited. Uh, the, fact, the, the fact that my parents tuned off because I was eating chicken wings. And then they two back in. So, hey, mom. Hey, dad. Love you. So, Lamar, did you have an opinion on the Blake James exit? Um, I sent Blake James a message today saying, hey, um, basically just saying, hey, man, listen, man. Um, You know, hey, you're a good dude. I appreciate everything because he did a lot for my my sister at the University of Miami when uh, she was there playing basketball. I said, uh, good luck to you and your future endeavors. He's a really good dude. You know, I just don't know if he was not a forefront guy to be out in the forefront. You know, he's he's uh, the guy that's behind the scenes, but as we well know at the University of Miami, you got to kind of be out in the front. So. But he did a he did a hell of a job at what he did, and um, you know, unfortunately for him, it was it was uh, it's time to go. So, you know, we got to move on. That's why. Right, so, so now they got to replace him. Correct. Okay? And you got a lot of things going on in that regard, Lamar. You've got <laughs> Alonzo Highsmith interested in the job. You've got Gino Toretta interested in the job. You might have Tuan Russell interested in the job. That's mm-hmm. the former player group. Um, then you've got some pretty big name um, athletic directors who I believe are interested in the job. Um, You know, one of them, uh, Tom Jurek from Mm -hmm. Louisville. I mean, everybody speaks incredibly highly of him. His exit at Louisville wasn't great. Uh, They'd have to work through some of that, but um, Mm -hmm. you know, there's speculation that he might be interested. Um, Mm -hmm. There's conversation about Dan Radakovich at Clemson, Mm -hmm. a Miami business guy. Uh, mm-hmm. who might be the perfect kind of athletic director to come in and oversee this new business of Miami athletics. I mean, you're going to be putting more money into the program. You got to make sure you're spending it right. Uh, you got to, you know, you got to get the, the, the U brand back to where it was. Uh, that's a big part of all this. Um, and then you've got the field, you know, do they go to a search firm and mm-hmm. open it up to the universe and take more time and, and see who's interested in the job? What do you think, Lamar? The bottom line is we have to um, we have to find the right guy that uh, you know uh, obviously Gino and Alonzo have a lot of experience with the University of Miami. 
Uh, and I'm just speaking on, on the guys I know. Um, Tom Jarrett, obviously, he was my AD at, at the University of Louisville. He was, uh, he was awesome. He's a winner in all sports. Um, and, and so is Gino uh, as far as what he knows, and so is Alonzo. Uh, you know, it's, it's one of those things where we got to be able to find that guy that is going to um, somehow come in and change the building, per se, the culture of the building. It's not even a football team. It's just a whole culture, per se. And uh, there are going to be some – if that new guy comes in, he has to make moves right away on guys in and out. you know. And that's going to hurt a lot of people's feelings. Uh, but I think it's for the betterment of the, the program to be able to move forward and to get some people in there that, uh, that I think have a longer – uh, stay and want to be there to to make this this ship right. Well, two twenty five hurricane keeps posting this over and over again in the chat, so I got to give him some screen time. And yeah. he wants Alonzo and Mario. Um, yeah. So two twenty five, we've got your votes registered. We got you, bro. We got you, bro. <laughs> I, I would like to see a Radakovich come in here, and maybe consider bringing either Mangino or Alonzo. Mm -hmm. to, to be an understudy so when, when they get when he decides to leave which won't be that maybe five years or whatever yeah. it'll be a much smoother transition instead of having to go out and do it again that's how yeah. i like I, I think it's hard for like a gino and alonzo to walk into the u right. and be the athletic director without ever having any administrative experience in an athletic department before like I, that's asking an awful lot right mm -hmm. but but maybe you, you take this guy radikovich who, I mean, who's an alpha athletic director. He's done everything, Lamar. Um, you know, they've won national titles at Clemson. Their minor sports are great. Um, you look at uh, fundraising. He's raised $200 million, guys, at Clemson. They've built some of the best facilities in the country. And the thing that impresses me the most about Dan Radakovich is what he has done in academic support. Lamar, if I told you that an athletic department has a cumulative, I'm talking every athlete, in that athletic department, a 3.6 GPA. Yes. Mm. I mean, is that ridiculous or what? No, but the, the question I have, why would he want to leave Clemson? He's been there eight years. He's done everything he could do there. I mm. think he would, I think he would consider doing this. I really do. Mm. Um, he's my number one candidate. If I think if you could get Dan Radakovich or Mario, you're rocking and rolling. Oh yeah. Um, and not only are you rocking and rolling, but but the Florida, Florida State, and some of these other schools would be they'll be pretty scared because they know what's coming. All right, which leads me into our next subject, Lamar, that I wanted to talk about tonight, and that's the pursuit of Mario, the pursuit of Mario football. Uh, your thoughts on that? Well, again, Gary, there's a guy that's still hired and he's still working. So for me personally, I'm not going. I, you can't talk. Let, you I, can't yeah, talk let, about the next until the while. Yeah, the, yeah, while yeah, that's. I mean, Bruce, you're great at it, Gary. You know, I, I just, for me personally, those guys that are on that staff, it would be doing them a disrespect because yeah, we still got. I, I, two, I, I feel we you. still have, we still have two games to go. If we win these two you. games, I hear you. I mean, then we go to a bowl game. But right now they're still on the staff and they're still trying to they're still game playing, they're still busting their ass, they're still being away from their families. Yeah, I wish they would they're like de declare themselves and say, Listen, yeah. you know, Manny, um, you're not gonna be back. We're gonna let you finish the season, just like they did at LSU. Um, I think now would be the time to do that. You know, yeah, I, you just, I, I just for, for me personally, I, I just don't like commenting on guys, you know, they're still in the building, they still have a job to do and you know, they got to go to work every morning and try to put the, 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 the great face on for those kids and try to get them, motivate them to win these games. So, you know, for me personally, I can't think about the next guy. I got to think about the, the kids and the program and winning these games. I can understand it. When Fuentes got fired, is he done or is he going to finish the season? Do you know, Gary? No, he's done. He's, he's done. done. Wow. <laughs> he's different. He's done. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I knew I knew two years ago they were having problems up there. I heard a yeah. lot. I mean, I don't know if it's true. I just I heard a lot of racial comments coming out of his mouth that are just mm. that didn't sit well with these kids. A lot of them quit. Dang. Wow, I didn't know that. The kid that transferred here, the defensive end, 
I forgot yeah. his name. How about what went on in Gainesville Saturday with the way those kids quit? Did you yeah. see that, Lamar? Oof. Hey, yeah, man. he's gone too. They put up he's a lot gone. of points. They were laying down. They were <laughs> letting them score. I've never seen anything like it in a college football game since the Gator flop. <laughs> hey, you got to understand something. They got rid of Todd, who runs a uh, – Todd Grantham, who runs a – you know, he, he runs a crazy defensive scheme. And probably have a guy that I don't even know who was calling the plays, but I mean those kids, man, they their their heads are probably spinning. And <laughs> you know, on the offensive side, they still have everybody except the old line coach who, you know, it's it's a little different. But the defensive coordinator, you fired a defensive coordinator with three games to go. Yeah. You you obviously I mean, and I talked to the offense, the the quarterback coach, and he said we had to score every point we had. Yeah, yeah. that 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 sums it up. We had to score every point we could. So insane. And, and they were preseason what number five, six, seven, something like that. They were overrated. Way overrated. Yeah, overrated. Overrated. <laughs> overrated. I got it. All right, you guys. I yeah, Bruce, we're gonna let you go. <laughs> And I'm going to do a little word association here with Lamar, and then we're going to go to bed. Um, Bruce, we'll see you next week. Thank you, Bruce. You guys. Be well. All right, bro. All right, LT. I'm going to throw some at you. All right, let's go. All right. Rohan Marley. Rohan Marley, rat boy. Man, uh, you know, Bob Marley's son, empire, hell of a football player, just relentless. Uh, This guy will give his – by the way, he had a bad body. Looked like SpongeBob, okay? But he would throw that old bad body around and make plays all left, jump over people. He, he was trying to impress. And, you know, the more I think about it, he was doing what everybody else was doing. We were trying to impress the older guys because we wanted those guys to respect us. So he gave everything he had. And I got to say, man, he's one of the – He's one of the best teammates I've had because uh, he, he gave it 110% all the time. I don't know that I've ever seen anybody have more fun on this show. He was laughing the whole night. Oh, he, was, he, he was loving he, life. But that's him. Even on the football field, he yeah. enjoyed life, and he cared nothing about nothing else but making plays and just trying to get everybody to do the right thing. Uh, how about Michael Barrow? Bam Bam, roommate. Man, what a player, man. Let me tell you something. This guy, he studied the game all the time. He studied the game and his Bible. I mean, he, you know, me and Charles Farm, we were trying to get out there in the night, night, the night setting. But this guy, man, he was staying and he's he already has a game plan. And he's just a great teammate. Just a really great teammate. And you knew your defense was on point with him being the leader, that middle linebacker. Remember, he replaced like a Bernard Clark. He replaced that guy. When Bernard left, he came in and replaced him. So he was the leader of our defense, and you couldn't ask for a better player to play alongside with Jesse and Darren and Rat Boy sometimes, Corin Francis. He was the leader of that defense. You know, it's funny. I was thinking about some of the stuff you say on the show, and I was driving by campus the other day, and I noticed I, – I, I don't know why I hadn't really noticed this before, but, like, two blocks up US1 from campus, there's a strip yeah. club. There's a strip club now. And I was thinking, like, oh, my God. If this thing had been here, like, back in the day, like, could you imagine? What, what strip club was that? I forget the name of it. Um, well, I don't want to know the name. It, it might not have been there when I was there. It, no, no way it was there when you were there. Okay, it, it's, good. It, 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 good. It's right on US-1, like, two blocks south of uh, Red Road. Unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, I was thinking if that had been there back when all you guys were in school, all hell would have broken <laughs> Yes, it would have. Um, all right. How about um, Darren Smith? Smitty, one of the great cover linebackers, changed the game. He was way beyond his time. This guy could run with receivers, tackle with the best of them. Uh, that's what you. That's what you see. And like he said before, that was the the striker before the striker was even invented. Because you know that's what they want nowadays at that striker position. Bertie Kozar. I'm, uh, I'm paying tribute to all of our guests tonight. Listen, listen man, Bernie. I, I, I just have a, 
I have a, a an affection for old Bernie Kozar because he saved my gig. And uh, what a what a great he's a UM guy. Like I, I, I there's not there there there's some guys that are UM guys, and he's definitely one of them. It means so much to him to be uh, a UM guy, and uh, you know the fact that he came in his restaurant. And I saw him, and he came right over here. I, this was not scripted. He came right over here, and he wanted to be on. So, yeah. you know, that meant that means a lot to me. Man. And then he's got me hitting him with all those hard. Yeah, you, you hit him with all the hard. <laughs> oh I was trying God. to. I was trying to better to answer them than Bernie. Oh man, you were you were killing them. Yeah, I'm you still were killing them. But you know what? Who better to give everybody insight That's true. on all those things That's than true. Bernie Kozar, man? That's I mean, true, those were man. some interesting That's sequences and decisions yes. and stuff yes. in that game on yes. Saturday. That yes. was a unique fourth quarter. And he, and he answered them better than we would have answered them. And better yeah. than, you know, oh, he's, he's, Bernie's he's been there. He's been there. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, let's uh, go Mario Cristobal. <sighs> classmate. Classmate of Darren. Classmate of Michael's, classmate of mine, um, doing a great job out of Oregon, and um, you know, he's he's the right person for that job, but he's also he could be the right person for our job. But right now, of course, Manny's in the box, and uh, it's not right to comment on anything else. And I, I got a little ahead of myself because you asked the question, but. <laughs> You know, Manny's in the man. box. I'm, yeah, I'm you, 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 got, you got me. You, you got me good. But Manny's well, in the box. I know, what the, I know what the people are interested in. I, I know what the people want. But, I mean, it's going to cost a lot to get that guy. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Well, they got they got the money. They If they want to do it, they got the money. All right. Um, just one money. thing. I mean, come on. They fired the guy at 7 o'clock in the morning on Monday or Tuesday. Well, I don't even know what day it was. He... He probably was going in there to get the game plan that they had been working on for two, three weeks, and they said, do, 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 you can't come in. Good luck to you, man. They, uh, you just gave – hopefully you just gave Manny another win, uh, and good luck to you. But that's a tough deal yeah. the week before a game that you have. You might have a chance to win. Yeah. But they, they decided we don't want to give you a chance. So well, – uh, it is. What you it you is. know what it is? There's a lot of openings around the country, and Virginia yeah. Tech is not like Miami or USC no. or LSU. No. Like you know, it's a little tougher to get a coach at, at Virginia Tech, and I think they just decided, hey, we better get on with this. But uh, what they're going to find out is like a lot of schools are going to find out who's out there. Right. Who moves the who needle? Is, who, who is who out there? The who allows who you to there? separate from yes. the pack? Yes. Is that be a lot of... real deep right yes. now, Lamar? Yes. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. All right, take us home with Manny Diaz. Manny, 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 you got a you got a great great opportunity to win a ball game. You got a great op- opportunity to win two ball games and then go to a bowl game. Um, got to come out and start fast. I mean, hell, we've been saying this all year. It's becoming redundant, but you know we saw it come back to bite us in the butt against Florida State. You got to come out fast, fast against this team who has no head coach, who essentially has no head coach. So hopefully that happens. And, um, you know, I'm pulling for you. I'm pulling for the, the program. I'm pulling for you. I'm pulling for the kids. And uh, hopefully we can we can have some momentum going into the Duke game, which we really should mo- need momentum, but you never know how this goes. And we go to a bowl game. So come on, Manny. I got you, bro. <laughs> all right lt uh awesome show as always uh let's thank our guest uh the impromptu appearance of bernie kozar that was yeah. all, all, absolutely awesome uh gotta give a little shout out to oj mcduffie for being kind of yeah. like a little sidekick yeah. over there on the side fish um, tank tune in to the fish tank the fish tank and watch him cheer also at the stadium yeah. um uh let's see who else darren smith rohan marley yeah. michael yeah. barrow uh yeah. thank you to those guys for coming on the show Thank you to our sponsors, All Canes. Go do your Black Friday shopping uh, mm-hmm. down at All Canes. Uh, they've got just about everything you could want for the Canes fan. Um, yeah, we'll throw Crowded in there right now. Uh, you'll be hearing a lot more from from, from me and, and us at Canes Sport tomorrow about Crowded because Crowded is hosting that roundtable of um, so many of the 
uh, top players that have that that have played. I think they've got about fifteen players coming. Yeah. Uh, Lamar's boy oh, yeah. um, sent me a, a a partial list today. If I can if I can find it, uh, Melvin Bratton will be there. Eddie yeah. Brown, Rohan Marley, who we saw tonight. Uh, Antra Roll, Roland Smith, Benny Blades, Brett Romberg, Jesse Armstead, Earl Little, Lamar. I know they've got some guys coming in on Zoom. Um, yeah. So Kraddit's got a nice little event going on. It's not open to the public. Um, Round table. We can't advertise where it is and all that. But we will have a lot of coverage of it on canesport.com mm-hmm. tomorrow night. Um, and next week on the Kraddit app, they will be showing a video of that event as well. And then, of course, we've got to thank Advanced Insurance and Financial, Ryan Collins' company. If you have insurance needs, uh, Ryan will take really good care of you. You can uh, give him a call. So, LT, we'll be back next Wednesday night to wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving. Um, Go Canes. Go Canes. Lamar and Bruce, I'm Gary. Thank you for joining us tonight on the Lamar to Kiss the Great Show. See you, <laughs> see you next week, everybody. Go Canes. Go Canes. <laughs>